Italian Football Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Italian Football Podcast. I'm Carlo Garganese, joined as always by Nima Tavali. On today's show we will review all the weekend Serie A action. Roma take the bragging rights in a in a, an explosive Rome derby as the, the pantomime villain Gianluca Mancini scores the winner and then uh, causes chaos at the end of the game with uh, the waving of, a, of a, an anti-Lazio flag. Uh, Juventus end their, their dreadful run in Serie A with a crucial win in the Champions League race over Fiorentina. Milan make it seven wins in a row by beating Lecce. Should Stefano Pioli now stay at Milan? Bologna finally slow down as they draw at Frosinone, while Napoli finally speed up as they put four past Monza in a game with some some quite incredible goals. Uh, Atalanta uh, suffer a a shock loss to to Cagliari. Uh, Claudio Ranieri, we're going to pay homage to him. He's uh, producing another miracle in a a career of of miracles. We'll review all the other uh, Serie A action. We'll look ahead to the return of European football this midweek, no Italian teams in the Champions League, but um, some massive games in the in the Europa League and Conference League for our teams. And we'll also have our usual Baggio, Premface and Serie Ass of the week. For all our first time listeners, this is our free weekly episode that we do every Monday, reviewing the weekend Serie action and all the biggest talking points in Italian football. If you want to support the Italian Football Podcast and receive all of our content that we do throughout the week, including a weekly Q&A episode every Tuesday where we answer all of the questions from our patrons, plus the weekly Thursday midweek review show, plus interviews, post-match reaction and much, much more, then go to patreon.com slash TIFP and become a subscriber for just two ninety nine a month plus VAT. You can also sign up to, to be a paid subscriber on Spotify and we'll provide the link in the description. It's the same price and the same terms as, as is on Patreon. And for all of you that do listen on Spotify, on Apple, on iTunes podcasts, we'd really appreciate if you give us a, a five-star rating and uh, give us a follow and a like. And we're also on YouTube as well. We're now over 2,000 subs. Um, so all of this, it really helps us to grow and do more quality content for you guys. Before we, we get into today's show, um, we just wanted to share some, some really nice news. Um, we're delighted to announce that we have officially partnered with Football Italia. Uh, football Italia are the, the world's biggest Italian football website in the English language. And they are the, the place to go for, for news and content for, for English-speaking fans of, of Serie A. Uh, our podcast will, will sit permanently on their website and in their, in their online content. And we're going to do a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff together going forward. And there's going to be a, an announcement on that probably this week on on Football Italia. And uh, we're we're yeah we're really really excited about it. So it's, it's another step forward on our journey uh, on the Italian Football Podcast. And uh, as always, you know, thanks to 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 all our listeners and and our patrons from from day one. And we you know we couldn't do it without you guys. So so big thanks to everyone. Okay, let's get into today's show. So let's start off with the Sunday evening game. Juventus against Fiorentina. Um, Juventus win 1-0. Crucial win for Juventus in the Champions League race. They get back on track after that awful run of one win in nine, which was starting to put their, their qualification in, in cha- for the Champions League in, in jeopardy. They, were, they really were plummeting. Um, but it was um, first and foremost, it's a massive, massive win for the Champions League. And it should now, given Atalanta lost, it should now put the Champions League uh, nerves uh, to, to bed. They've gained two points on Bologna, so they're now four ahead of Bologna in fourth. Juventus, of course, in third. They stay seven ahead of Roma, who did win, and Roma in fifth place. But most importantly, given that it looks almost certain that Serie A is going to have five teams qualify for the Champions League, they've increased their gap over Atalanta in six to 12 points. Atalanta do have a game in hand. Um, after Atalanta's shock loss to, to Cagliari. So now they look like they are, they're virtually there, Nimmer. Oh, they are. There's, I've, I mean, I've been consistently saying they're going to get to the Champions League, they're going to finish second or third, and I still believe that. I think now it's there's no doubt. There's no doubt. They're not going to... I mean, even if Fiorent- Atalanta win their game in hand against Fiorentina, they'll be nine points clear. I just don't see Juventus dropping nine, ten points on the last seven games to to Atalanta, I think 
I think it's all it's it's a given now. They've secured uh, Champions League football. Question is, do they finish third, fourth, or fifth? Um, I I still think that uh, I think they'll finish third, uh, and I think they'll get to the they'll win the Coppa Italia as well, and and that'll be that. Um, but so, but yeah, of course, it's a difficult it's a difficult situation that they've gone through. But Juve have bounced back. Juve have reacted. Juve beat uh, comfortably Lazio. And they beat Fiorentina yesterday, um, conceding nothing, essentially. Um, and they they reacted, uh, which is what I kind of expected them to do. Um, and I think they, they were unlucky not to win by more goals yesterday. I mean, if you look at the XG, they had an XG of 1.94. Um, despite twenty five percent possession, which is irrelevant, if you if you have an xG of one point nine four, um, and you have, you know, and, and you have twenty five percent possession, it's it doesn't matter because that means you've created enough to score. And they did score like what was it three goals, four goals, and then like it was it were disallowed, three for, disallowed. For offside. Yeah. So I mean, look, they they did more than do what they needed to do to win this game. They won deservedly. Um, the first half, I thought they out. You know, they were they were completely in control. Of uh, yeah, there was a game of two halves from Juventus. It was look, the first half; they were good. Um, they they created quite a few big chances. They they had a well, they had a one point eight three, I think, xg yeah. at half time. And as you said, yeah, they they had three disallowed. They hit the woodwork. And they, you can't they, ask they, for more. They scored. You, you um, can't ask for more. I mean, it's hitting the woodwork and millimeter offsides, and I mean that that's unlucky. That that to me is more more bad luck than anything. Uh, I thought you were outstanding in the first half. I the first half, was... they, they were they were they were a much better team. the The problem is uh, is the second half they just completely stopped playing and they mm. they parked the bus and it's just not acceptable. And it just you know again is is um, against yeah. better teams. Yes, it's unacceptable. But Fiorentina. Are just showed everything that I've been critical of uh, Italiano. We're going to get to that. Well, but. no, it's it's unacceptable against anybody. Uh, it's, it's it's unacceptable. Uh, I would say it's acceptable against the big team. It's unacceptable against the team that that's that's. Uh, it's acceptable against the very very best team. It's acceptable against a Man City where you accept they're a better team. It's not acceptable against a team like Fiorentina where you are the better team. You've showed in the first half that you're the better team and you've created lots of chances, and then you just decide to stop playing. And li- let me read out these stats for the second half. It's just embarrassing, right? 0.14 xg. So that xg that you're talking about, that all came from the first half. Um, mm. The second half, one shot on goal, sixteen percent possession, sixteen percent possession in the second half. Fiorentina had eighty four percent possession in the second half. Um, not since Pep Guardiola and Barcelona <laughs> times have we seen have we seen possession or dominance like that. Well, it's um, not dominance. Zero. It's- Zero complete possessional dominance. Zero no, completed possessional dominance. Zero they completed it. They conceded it. I mean, zero zero yeah. completed crosses. Forty one completed passes. <laughs> the Juventus were, were com- completing one, uh, an average of what less than one pass per minute for the second uh, le- the second half. Fiorentina had three hundred and eleven uh, passes in it, and then in the end, they're lucky not to concede an equaliser in that second half. Gonzalez hits the bar. With an absolutely world class save from mm. from Chesney was brilliant, and then Beltran had a huge chance at the end, which would would have would have been a goal had his own player not blocked it on the line, uh, Unzola. And mm. um, so this is the problem with Allegri is is too easy for him to just to re- revert to defence. Juventus were just ridiculously deep, and and also uh, uh, additionally Juventus just have not been able to play consistently well over two halves throughout these three years. You know, even when they've you know. Had a, had some good moments or had some good some good games. Um, it's never been consistent. It's always been just for a half or or fifty minutes or, or sixty minutes at the very very most. And then they, they just defend in for their lives in their own penalty area. So at the end of the day, look, it doesn't matter now. We're in April twenty twenty four. Um, you know, we're three years into this project. Uh, that's not going to change now. We all hope, Juventus fans all hope, that this is the end of Allegri. The most important thing now, there's no point having discussions over his philosophy anymore because, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. What is what is important now is Juventus get into the Champions League um, because that is vital. They're in a position now where it looks like they're going to do that and then we can rebuild with a new coach and we can have this discussion then. But mm. the most important thing was they won the game. 
Um, it's pointless even talking about this kind of stuff, even though I've just spent the last three minutes doing so. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it's it's like you know, there's no point moaning about it anymore. Um, basically, uh-huh. is, is what is what I'm saying. Like my, it's, the, only it's the bottom line. If, That's we, the bottom if we're going to be a bit like, I mean, in a serious from a more serious perspective, I think if you're going to look at like what I'm critical of Allegri in this game is, I don't have a problem with him shutting game down when you're up by a goal and you've dominated the first half. Uh, but I don't like is this is something that happens too much. And this, this kind of complete stopping playing for 45 minutes that it's too much of a risk. I mean, I say for me, it's like at least try to continue into the 50th, 60th minute, something like that. And then maybe shut down, but you, you know, this is, you know, but this is more taste than anything. I think it's unnecessary risk. I I mean, he's a pragmatic person who likes to minimize risk. Well, when you defend like that, without any kind of, when you defend too deep for 45 minutes, you're going to concede a chance like the Gonzalez one, right. And the Beltran one, and that's an unnecessary risk. So that's why I think you should, you should try to, you know, depending on who you go up against, like you said, you should at least try to impose yourself for a few minutes in the second half and then, you know, score the second and then shut it down. Then I have no problem with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's like that. That's my only criticism of, of the second half. I think that's the criticism of everyone with Allegri. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can, you can, we can, we can uh, have different ways that we explain mm-hmm. ourselves. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I think everybody mm-hmm. has the same issue. It's just they go to different extents in the way that they... No, I know. thought it was too extreme. I thought it was too extreme to for 45 minutes in the second. I mean, this was, this is, I, I understand the thinking behind it because Vincenzo Italiano is the, you know, intergalactic emperor of meaningless possession in the opposition's half. You can't you just give him the ball, you can't do anything with it. Um and, and that's what he did. Again, we saw we saw again with with with, with Italiano. Uh meaningless, pointless, unthreatening pos- possession in in the opposition's half. One chance that really didn't come from giocate, but more chance and just lobbing the ball in um when you're desperate. And so I get the thinking behind it. I just think that it's it's an it's an unnecessary risk because when you're just leading by a goal, a, the ball can bounce off someone and it ends up in the back of the net, and you end up losing a game or dropping points in a game where you where you're the better team. It's just unnecessary risk um, for, from from Allegri's point of view. But overall, I thought like the first half, Juve were comfortable. Juve were very comfortable. They, yeah, yeah. We'll they come were, to Fiorentina in, in just a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, they, Fiorentina didn't turn up in the first half yeah. at all. Um, I just no, wanted to. Juve were so. Comfortable. I just wanted to pick out two things. First of all, uh, Juventus and set pieces. Yeah, um, good I I was trying to search for the stats. I did have the stats somewhere, but I've I, I misplaced it now. But they're definitely top three, I believe, this season. Mm. And I think they were top one or top two last season. You know. That's one thing that you're always guaranteed with Allegri is the teams, all your teams, their teams are always going to be good. Uh, always set pieces on corners. Uh, I mean, it is basically Juventus' style of play under Allegri: crosses and set pieces, Brexit football. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's they are really, really dangerous. And of course, Gatti. That's how they got the goal. Um, mm. Federico, mm. pussy cat, 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 as you call Freddy it. Cat. <laughs> Freddy the punching pussy cat. Yeah, um, he, he yeah. scored. I mean, he is dangerous on set pieces. Yeah, and, he is. He is. He, he he's uh, you know he's a player who's who, who has very he's got quite you know, a lot of decisive goals actually. Yeah, I was just about to say he's become this kind of you know he 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 ends up scoring important goals for you but even though he's a very limited player technically he's a decent defender he's he's a good defender i think he he's also becoming some kind of a this kind of character that kind of ends up making decisive uh, goal scoring decisive goals and coming up in decisive moments for Juve um, and and he's had a good season ever since that Sassuolo debacle in the early on in the season he's he's been really really good uh, consistently um, i think he's taken huge strides this season. I think he's an example for for players who, especially where he came from. I mean, what was he yeah. up until a few years ago? Was he was he a bricklayer? I forget. I forget. Yeah. I forget. Uh, there's, yeah, there's, you've was. got the bricklayer him. You've got the the fridge seller Junior Macias. Uh, you know, no, he I was think, a delivery man. He delivered fridges. He didn't sell them. He just delivered them. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But he probably on the side. He probably. He probably. I don't know. Let's not. <laughs> let's not go there. Let's not I mean, go I would, there. I would, <laughs> let's I mean, not it's go possible. There. It's possible. Yes, uh, everything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, you know, I think these kind of players are an example to to everyone. I think they're really you know they're not the best players. They're not 
ever going to make it at the top, top... I mean, people will say Gatti playing for Juventus is the top level, but they're never going to be top players, let's say. No. Um, but the fact that they get to this level, playing for Juventus, playing for Milan, playing in big matches, scoring decisive goals. I mean, Messias playing in a Champions League semi-final. You know, I mean, I think it's a be- I think it's beautiful. And it's, a, it's an example to everyone that with what what can be done with hard work, determination, yeah. Yeah. you know, that, that, you know, it is possible. Uh, you know, nothing's been given to them and they've, they've managed to work their way up. And yes, people will take the piss out of them for maybe not being good enough. Uh, and, you know, it's probably true. I don't think for a Juventus team or a Milan team that wants to be what they should be, these players are not good enough to, to play for them, not to start and probably not even to be a squad player. But as a story on themselves, I think it's beautiful. So it's, uh, you have to give it to Gay, especially as he could have been, most people would have been destroyed by the criticism that he got after the Sassuolo game and he's come back and actually you know he, he he's he's become um you know I wouldn't say important player but he has scored some important goals this season so there's no doubt that's good the other player that I think is is also gets unfairly criticized Chesney I've always said I think he's been ridiculously underrated at Juventus at I've always considered him a top goalkeeper. Yes, like all goalkeepers, he has his bad spells. I mean, even we've seen Magnon, we've seen uh, all of them. All the top goalkeepers have have bad have bad moments and bad spells. I thought the save he made from Nico Gonzalez was was absolutely world class. If any other goalkeepers making that save, we're going on about it for you know if Donnarumma makes that save or if if um, someone in the Premier League makes that save, we're going on and on and on about it. I mean, that was that was a miraculous save uh, onto the bar. And um, he's just, I just think he, he's been unfair. I think he's been un, very underrated. I think he's been a top goalkeeper at Juventus for years. He's, he's reliable. He's, he's uh, good with his feet. He's a great decision maker. He's great on crosses. Uh, he's safe. He's commanding. Um, he's good in the changing room. Um, I, think he's, I think he's been a top, top goalkeeper. He's not been the very, very top in the world, but I think he's, he's, he's safe. Uh, and um, I think he deserves more respect than than, than he's got um, at Juve, especially during these difficult three years. I think I think he's been respected just fine. I, I don't, I, you know, I, I think he this is who he is. I I don't I don't think he's I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen I, I, maybe I've missed it, but I, I've never seen anyone kind of slate him or underrate him or or anything like that. I think he's rated just fine. I think this is what he is. I do think, however. That I do think, however, that it's time for for Juve to start uh, moving away from him and look to the future. That that, that, that I do think. Uh, I think at some point Juve need to to move away. I think away. it's the last of Juventus's issues. I, I think. Well, of course, you know, but got I do a lot, think so much should, work to do in this they squad. Do, I think they you, do, but they need to start thinking about it. So well, of course, so you have to start thinking about anyone that turns yeah. thirty four or thirty three, thirty four yeah. as he is. That's just natural, isn't it? But I think mm. that he's. Um, yeah, I think I think I I, I think he's been great, uh, and is and actually Juventus' decision to stick with him rather than go for Donnarumma, uh, you know, they got a lot of criticism for them at, for that at the time. I I don't think it's been an awful decision to be honest. Yes, of course, in the long term, Donnarumma's got years and years and years, uh, uh, to, to, you know, but uh, I don't think it, he's done anyone any Juventus any disservice. No. We'll see. I mean, if Donnarumma doesn't extend his contract with PSG, I think it's almost certain he goes to Juve, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I well, possibly, think. if he wants to take a pay cut. Um, let's talk mm-hmm. just quickly about Fiorentina. Um, they uh, they will be disappointed, I think, with the performance. Um, after such a good performance in midweek against Atalanta, when they, where they were completely dominant, they had one day less rest than Juventus. Maybe that played a bit of a part. Maybe Juventus having that full week uh, rest. Um they 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 were awful. I thought in the first half, dreadful, uh, very. You know, they did they 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 didn't turn up at all. But they were much better in the second half. I mean, they dominated the second half and uh, completely. Um, you know, didn't create loads and loads of chances, as we said. But they, you know, they hit the bar, which would have been a goal with with ninety nine percent of goalkeepers. That that's a goal, and then a, a huge Beltran chance that that should have been a goal, but Unzala. <laughs> saved it for you, mate. Um, you know, so I, I think that um, I don't think they will be devastated. I think it, it, it kind of sets them up all right for the Europa League, um, knowing that they've conference had, league. Sorry, but, the conference league. Yeah. yeah, I think it sets them up nicely, knowing that they've they put in a performance, second half performance like this against Juve, and 
and coming off the Atalanta win. So I don't think they'll be... I mean, I think the league's gone for them now, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're Listen, all they in on Europa fo- now. Yeah, they have to focus on getting to the final of the Coppa Italia and the final of Conference Conference League. I don't think they have a chance to beat Juve in the final of the Coppa Italia because Allegri in a tournament, in a, in a final one-off game, if you thought the second half was was dreary and and uh, <laughs> if you thought the second half, Juve's second half was anti-football, you're in for a treat in Rome uh, when, when Fiorentina or Atalanta play Juve. There's no chance Allegri's going to, like, he's going to score his goals and then he's going to completely shut the game down. So I don't think they have a chance against against um, Juve in a Coppa Italia final. I think their only chance of getting to Europe next season is to win the Conference League. Uh, and that's going to be tricky if the opposition's name is is uh, Aston Villa because they're a good side and Unai Emery is a very good coach. And I wonder if Vincenzo Italiano is good enough to uh, to to, un- to 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 rattle tactically Unai Emery. But yes, they need to get to the final uh, of the of the Conference League. And I think if they were to win it, or they have to win it in order to play in Europe next season. Uh, and then, you know, so, but, so I think that's their best chance. And I think they should go for it. They should really focus on that because again, in a one-off games, anything can happen. Um, but the problems with Fiorentina under Italiano continue. This is, this is Vincenzo Italiano. And this is why when, when Aurelio De Laurentiis continues to want to bring him to Napoli, I keep saying, I think this is a huge mistake. Sterile position, um, Nice little moves, some nice, cute little patterns here and there, but no profondita, no no bite, nothing in the final third. And I just do not... I mean, if you know, it's not the same thing. And then defensively, he is shocking. He got carved open time and time again in the first half against Allegri. Um, and th- th- this is a problem with him. Um, and, and, and for Fiorentina... You know, this talk of Paladino, which I think is a great move. We spoke about this a couple of weeks ago before the rumors even started that we thought that might be a good fit for Fiorentina. And also Sarri, but, you know, that's not going to happen because of, you know, the personality clashes between <laughs> between Comissa and, and Sarri would be too much. But I do think Fiorentina should, should you know, try to, uh, you, you know, moving away and how we sum up this Italiano era, I think it really is to be, you know, there's so much, the, the rating I give this Italiano Fiorentina project these few years depends entirely on the last few months because if we're in a position again where for the second year in a row, for uh, another Coppa Italia Conference League final and not a single trophy to show for it, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, people say, oh, two European finals. Yes, but what was the competition on route to those European finals? They weren't, that was, it wasn't great. It was all teams you expect Fiorentina to beat. And getting to the Coppa Italia final, great. Sure, that's also great. But you still didn't win anything. And Fiorentina haven't won anything forever. And and Yeah, and I know. That's listen, at the end of the day it's Fiorentina. You don't expect to win anything with your Fiorentina. So I don't yeah, think you can use that as a you can't use that as a, mm-hmm. not winning anything cannot be used as a stick to beat. Yes, I, I can. With any... the conference league I can. With the conference league I can. I am not imp- I, especially last season against West Ham, who were not good. This season against Aston Villa, I have more of an understanding. Yeah, they were unlucky, though. Good. Let's be honest; they were really unlucky in, mm-hmm. in, in in that final. And that final shouldn't have even gone ahead. They should have been given the. They should have been given that final after the, <laughs> after, the after the fan violence. I mean, anti-Italian discrimination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, they, they have been unlucky as well. I saw a stat yesterday that Fiorentina hit the woodwork more than anyone in Serie A this so season, true. and they hit the woodwork again. Um, you know, but we'll, listen, the, the test will come with Italiano at Napoli when he's got when he's got top attackers. Uh, or much better attackers than he's got at Fiorentina because he's he's had abysmal, uh, with the exception of Nico Gonzalez, he's had abysmal attackers. He's had relegation standard attackers at mm. at, 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 uh, at Fiorentina. So mm. you know, I will see at Napoli with better attackers if he's still failing to score uh, or or convert. Let's say because uh, mm. Fiorentina create the chances, they just don't they don't put them away. Mm. And then 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 then. Um, oh, let me put it to you this way: I hope if. If Italiano goes to Napoli, then I hope De Laurentiis brings Nico Gonzalez with him because he needs him at Napoli. And I think Nico Gonzalez at Napoli would be unbelievable. That would be great to have him and Cavada, but I think that his price tag will be too big for for Serie A. Well, I'm not sure. If you sell Victor Ossiman for £100 million or whatever you're going to sell him for, there is money. There is money, money, yeah, but I mean... Yeah, yeah. but he needs to spend. spend. Like, come Mm. on. Otherwise, then what's the point of this? Like the, the, what? What Napoli are Europa League side now? I mean, do, do you see what I'm saying? 
Um, it's it, it makes no sense. Like you, you have to make a decision. You can't eat your cake and have it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll come to Napoli in a bit. Um, let's let's go to the Rome derby, which was of course the biggest game of the of the weekend. And my gosh, it was it was explosive, Nima. It was everything that you expect from a Rome derby in terms of the the flashpoints, in terms of the players and the staff and the fans and and especially a certain Gianluca Mancini who was the the hero and let's say the villain depending on your who you support of the of the of the game i mean his story in this game was amazing he was he was ill before the game basically in bed he shouldn't have even been playing um, but he managed to he, he took some some medicine before the game to play and he scores the winner he played a great game uh, and then after the match he 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 infuriates pretty much the entire Lazio fan base by waving around the Lazio flag with a rat on it. It's that I I <laughs> couldn't stop laughing at that. It was laugh, L-M-F-A-O, funny. It was, and it's him too, of all people, that he knows exactly what he's doing. He's just winding them up. And it's just, it's just, it's so, it's the Rome derby. That, that, was, that game for me was this typical Rome derby. It was crazy. It was... It was lots of feelings. It was lots of antagonism. Um, it was, and, and of course, Mancini scores the winner. It was an excellent header. And I got to say, he's been very good defensively mm. since, uh, well, this season overall, he's been good defensively overall. And since De Rossi's taken over, he's he's actually, you know, he's actually continued down the path where M- Mourinho seemed to have kind of calmed him down on the pitch. Um, De Rossi definitely has. He's, he respects De Rossi. And of course, you know, if you're at Roma and De Rossi is there, you're going to respect him. But he, I think he's he's taken steps um, under De Rossi uh, on a mental level. And he's becoming a leader, an actual leader now at Roma. And, you know, those of you who've listened to this pod for a few years, for the last two, three years, knows that he's, he's actually someone who I rated really highly when he was at Atalanta. And I wanted him to... You know, I was thinking maybe he should go to Inter and because I because I really liked what he did at Atalanta. I loved him when when Roma had to play him as a central like a regista. He was excellent there. Um, but since then, it's been kind of rocky. I think he. I hope and I think that we're actually seeing him kind of take that maturity step, that last step that can actually make him a, a very solid defender for Roma and for Italy. Because if Italy are going to play a back three. He should, you know, because if Di Lorenzo is going to continue this struggle, we don't know if it's just bad form or if it's an actual qualitative drop. But then you need options. And I think Mancini and a back three to the right is a very good option for Italy. Um, and, and, it, and Italy need him to be good. I thought he was very good against Lazio. I thought he was a leader, um, the kind of leader that Roma have not had in their defence for, for quite some time, uh, if you discount Chris Smalling. Um, so... No, I, I was really impressed by him. Yeah, I was I, impressed. I was, really... I was impressed, and I agree with you. I think he he has been. Um, I think he has been pretty good uh, this season. Certainly in twenty twenty four, he's mm-hmm. he's and and I think he he on performance. If you take away that everything else, the the image of him, I think he mm-hmm. deserves to go to the Euros. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, he has to go. Um, I think you you, you got to bring him. If you're going to play a back three, you have to bring Mancini. With and you got to remember, he wasn't actually called up for the last squad. No. The only reason he got in was because of the Acerbi. He came yeah. in as a replacement for Acerbi Which, after what yeah. happened. So, yeah. no, I th- I th- at I the think moment, he's be. probably, or before that, you know, when Spalletti's in his mind, who's going to be the players? Like He's just out of the squad yeah. I think, at the moment. Yeah. No, I think if he continues to play like this and he continues to show the... I mean, I, you know, he is Roma's Materazzi. Like, Materazzi used to do these wind-up things as well. Like, it, it, he, is what, he is who he is. So he's never going to change fully. But if he can show the composure and maturity on the pitch, he's always going to be a wind-up match. The thing is with Materazzi is Materazzi... The image of Materazzi in terms of the level of player that he was, comp- was, like you said, I think it's a really good comparison. He was Mancini until mm. the 2006 World Cup where he had that amazing World Cup yeah, in which he was a protagonist and helping Italy. I mean, a very key player in Italy. When let's be honest, in, in winning well, Italy the, World Cup. the World Cup without you know, yeah, it's being a key that. player in Italy winning the World Cup, and then his image after of that kind of changed. People kind yeah. of still recognise that. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> Nestor or Cannavaro, but he was. You know, people think oh, actually he was. A, he was. He was a. You know, he was a. He was a very good player, but 
actually, if you watch his whole career, he was he, he was, was kind a, of a Mancini. You know, oh, he, he wasn't was, bad. He was I think no. he was always a good player, yeah. but he was a bit of a blithering idiot. He was he you know he was a wound up merchant. Yeah, you couldn't rely to, on him. He would get no, a red card he could get himself or, or, himself or he off. would yeah, give away exactly. a penalty or, or yeah. you know something like that. And but that was he, he was Mancini. So. You know, I think that's. I, I really like that Mancini Materazzi. Uh, no, but, I mean he is Roma's Materazzi, but he's he's maturing at a much quicker rate than than Materazzi did, um, and because uh, Materazzi was in his thirties before he had that World Cup. Uh, and the following season, which people forget after the World Cup, where he was the best defender in, in the Serie A and was just unbelievable. It was key together with Zlatan for, for Inter winning that Scudetto um, and Stankovic. But um, so, no, I, I do think that it's it's nice to see. And this kind of brings me on nicely to De Rossi, because if you, for me, he has ticked every single box for Roma in terms of what he's done since he's taken over. And, and in the sense that he's, um, in the sense that he's, that Roma should keep him. I don't really care. That's the big Roma. question I want to ask. Like, he's yeah. made an incredible impact. He's, he's, but he's ticked every box. Yeah. I'm he's, looking well, at he's the getting the results. He's, he's getting, getting the, the results. performances. He's getting the he's performances. He's won the Rome, he's won the Rome derby now. And he's also shown himself to be quite tactically flexible. Like the way that he, I know he got one game wrong where he started with a back three and it was a disaster. And then they changed at half time. I forget in which game it was. They ended up getting a draw in the mm-hmm. game. It might have been Fiorentina actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and, and, but this but game, me, this game, me, he moved I'm... to a back three in the last 10 minutes, bringing on Smalling. And I, I just think that the way that he thinks about the game is, um, you know, he's not, He's he's flexible. He, he's he's got. It's ideas. not just that he's flexible. I love what he's done to Roma in both phases. He did what he did. He has done in a couple of weeks what Mourinho failed to do in two and a half years, um, and that is he's able to get. He's made Roma really defensively solid, but he's also made them very attackingly threatening in terms of their movement, in terms of how they attack, uh, in terms of creating problems for teams uh, in the final third because of that movement, because of the interchange of play, because of using them, the attacking players, putting them in the right positions, understanding their limitations, such as Lukaku right now in the stage that he is in his career. And okay, well, Lukaku can't do, can't do this anymore. Yes, but what can he do? He can win the ball up and we can, we can put him in a position where he's just there. He wins the ball, he plays it off of Dybala, who then creates either, you know, through, you know, down the flanks with, with Pellegrini, with, with whoever. And, and also the development of individual players. This 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 kid goalkeeper they've got who he who he made the first goalkeeper, and it's been brilliant. Bov has taken st- strides. Um, Pellegrini's never been better, never been better in his career, and is now a key player for Italy as a result of it. Um, again, I I think he has ticked every single box. I don't care if they don't make the Champions League. I think they will, but I don't care if they do. I think he's done. He's proven, and given where Roma are financially and, and the problems that they will have because of this ridiculous settlement agreement that has been forced upon them, and with young players and so on, and also given who he is as a as a uniting character in Roma, nobody like everybody loves him, everybody respects him. I I honestly think you can't find someone better for Roma in in, in the precise moment that they are in right now. I think he is more than deserved. To, to be given this job permanently and um well he's been offered the job he, he's been offered the job from at Fiorentina and he and he's held off accepting it because you know he's waiting for Roma and he's still waiting for Roma we obviously we don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes but there's reports coming out uh, this morning that are recording on Monday that that Roma that Manuel Pellegrini the former man city and, and Betis coach was was in Rome um, that he's he's held talks and that they're looking at potentially appointing him. I mean, that's a mistake. For I me. mean, why aren't why? I mean, w- I mean, surely he should have been given the job already by now. No, I don't think you can give it before at this point. You know, with with the Champions League and the Europa League being what it is, but uh, and hanging in the balance, I think they just want to focus on it. But I do think that. But De Rossi if, needs to make a decision though, because he's got a job on the line from Fiorentina. If he if he doesn't accept yeah. that, for, there has to be a deadline. 
he, yeah, there he, is a dead. There's no doubt that there's a deadline, but I think I don't think it's now. I think you you don't talk about that now. Not not when you're in the quarterfinals with seven games left of the uh, you know quarterfinal of the Europa League and seven games left of the season. You don't talk about that now. You, you have to wait until you have more clarity as to where Roma are going to be next season. Um, Pellegrini, I respect what he's done in his career. I think he's a great coach. I just think it would be a huge mistake at this point, and also a very unpopular one. Because think about it, the Friedkins will make themselves incredibly unpopular. Getting rid of Mourinho, who we know the Roma fans love, and now De Rossi as well. That's that's like that's essentially P that's that's committing suicide in Rome if you if you get rid of both of them in, in six months. Mm-hmm. Especially okay, the Mourinho one, fine. But De Rossi, if he has success, if he gets Roma to to the Champions League, if if he if he's to, if he even gets Roma to the semi final or final of the Europa League, how do you get it's it's madness if you get rid of him. Unless, unless you say, you know what, we're getting rid of all these, we're building completely new from scratch, everyone out, new in, you know, 10 players out, 10 players in, new, new, you know, start from scratch. But even then, I think you I have think you've got to give him the job. I mean, I think, give I think the job. he's got the third best start to a Roma manager, managerial career in, in the, the last 30 years, mm-hmm. I saw. Uh, Look, I mean, this isn't this isn't when they gave the job to Montella and he did all right, and then you know th- I, this isn't that. This is different. This is someone who actually understands the game. That the improvement that Roma have shown tactically in both phases is not by chance. That that's my that's my conviction. Um, and the improvement, and I think this is backed up by the improvement of individual players of all ages at yeah. Roma. This isn't just vibes. This isn't just a green. No, game everyone's player. flourished under him. The only per- yeah. person that hasn't is probably Lukaku, but that's, yeah, that's but Lukaku he's... being, you know, on the decline probably. But yeah, everybody he's... else, you know, even though I thought Lukaku was actually pretty good in this derby in the second half, anyway, I thought he did he did pretty well. But like all the key players, like you said, have have um, have, 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 have flourished uh, mm. under under Lukaku under De Rossi. I mean, he's he's done an amazing job. I, I don't see. Uh, I think you, you. I think you have to just give him the job. Uh, you have to, you have yeah. to you now, especially with, like you said, with the financial limitations that they've got, they're not going to be able to go out and, and spend heavily. And they might even have to lose, they might even lose players this summer. Yeah. Then what you cut, you know, you need, De Rossi probably fits the bill as being the right kind of coach yeah. in those circumstances. And also it gives you serenity because if De Rossi's there, there's more patience from the fans towards the project. Um, the, you know, Roma fans are very, it's, it, you know, they, they, Rome is a special place. And if you've got a bandiera, someone who bleeds the club, they have patience for that. There, there is longer patience for that, even if the results don't come. Um, and, 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 yeah, I, I don't get, I don't get the Pellegrini. Um, I mean, I think he's been a, an excellent coach in his career, but he's, the 70, he's 70. He's going to turn mm. 71 in September. Yeah. I mean, what, what, I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, I mean, I, if they get, if they get Conte, if they're in the Champions League and they somehow manage to pull Antonio Conte out of the bag, well, f- fine. <laughs> but Pellegrini? Nah. Conte excites the fan base. Pellegrini, not so much. If you know what I mean. Yeah, that's exactly, yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, but, We'll see. We'll see. I, I personally, I mean, I like Pellegrini. I, I think he's had a great career. I think he's been yeah, very, under, I'm, I'm he's been very underrated. He's good at me bit, too. He's good me at quite. Too. He's good at developing and building. Plays good football, but but yeah. I mean, come on. He's 71 years old. I mean, this is not not. This is. No, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on no, the this. Is no project, is it? No, you no. Know. Well, that's the thing. I mean, and if you want to start a project, you do it with a 71 year old. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just. I'm not. I'm mm. no. I'm with at you. End of the end of the day, though, this was a great day for Roma. Um, and very good. Uh, and very good. Uh, also other positives: the return of Sammy Abraham after a year mm. out with the ACL. Yeah. That was um, nice to he see. wasn't very good, but you don't expect no, him but... to be. Um, but uh, that's that's a positive. That's great. Um, he can be a helping hand for these last six weeks uh, of of the season. Um, yeah, you know, he's got and goals. Him into some and form small of in as ma- well, being back. I mean, he's had a nightmare season with injury. Yeah. Again, you know, he can be very, very important in the last six weeks. He can stay fit, uh, having him available, even if it's just to come on in the last ten minutes of fifteen minutes of games, just to see out results. I mean, he's he's there's not many better players when you're defending a lead, defending deep, defending crosses, you know, direct balls. I mean, he's he's great at that. So, yeah, um, so yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great day for Roma. It's a crucial for the Champions League race, especially because Atalanta lost. 
Um, it's that they do have the tougher, toughest run in, I think, out of, the, out of those teams. Do. But they've got one of their tough games out of the way. They just have to keep winning. They have to keep performing. And, and if they if they do, if they play, you know, it wasn't an amazing performance, but they deserve to win this game. And um, mm. Lazio, if we move to Lazio, Lazio were poor. Um, the Tudor honeymoon, Nimmer, is definitely over. They got the win on their debut against Juventus and, and it was great. And now they've had two losses in a row um, where they were they were very well they were awful I thought against Juventus in the yeah. Coppa Italia they they I think they had an XG in that game of like zero point one four or something if I'm not mistaken it was it was that it was that bad and then uh, and then they lose this game where again they 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 barely created anything in, in this game I can't even think of a chance in this game that they had. I think nothing sums it up towards the end of the game with those two free kicks where they just didn't know what the hell they were doing and misplaced passes. Pellegrini, and, oh my god, Ugh. he's so just, bad. He's no, so but bad. it's it's not just that. It's just it's just Lazio are disjointed, um, and I don't think we should be too harsh on 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 Tudor Igor Tudor. I think we should just leave him alone, let him finish this season with just let's end this season and then proper build rebuild in the summer because again we keep saying it the key players at Lazio are too old or have passed it it's not about the age as such it's more about where they are in their careers Immobile Pedro Felipe Anderson um you know uh, Luis Alberto Vecino I mean these guys are at the end of their careers Husay Marusic, they're not at the peak of their careers. They're towards the end of their careers. They're either on, they're either, you know, have declined, are declining. And and you can't have that many players in that situation uh, being the core and key of your squad. It's just not possible. And, and, and Lotita has to rebuild. I think there are interesting players there. I think Isaksen is interesting. Um, I think Gwendozi has been a very positive player. Uh, surprise for me uh, Rovella can we rehabilitate him I believe he, you can he's only 22 I think Mario Gila is only he's only 23 he's been really good I'm really impressed by him um, I think Casale and Romagnoli have a future I I think you know there, there are there are interesting pieces to build from there but they need to do a rebuild they really really need to do a the rebuild. biggest the biggest takeaway for me from this is Immobile this taken off at half time uh, just kind of sums everything up that this is the end of Chido Immobile. I think yeah. that that has got to be, I think is a good mm. chance that is his final Rome derby. Yeah. Uh, and it's a kind of a sad end to to his uh, Rome derby career, isn't it? It's a player that's mm. given so much for Lazio to be hauled off at half time. Mm. Um, you know, your main man uh, mm. taken off at half time and uh, in, a, in a defeat. I think that is. Probably like the the image of the game, really. Him coming. Father off. Time is undefeated, isn't it? Like it happens to all all the greatest yeah. players, you know. Yeah. And Chiro is is a Lazio legend. I mean, he he what he's done at Lazio is is truly unbelievable. Uh, and Kamada is getting an opportunity now under Tudor, but he was really bad. He, he had an offside. He looks goal. disinterested. He had an offside looks, goal that could have been. Yeah, but he looks so disinterested. I think he for me it, it's it's as if he's counting the minutes to go. That's the vibe I get from watching Kamada play. He's fed up with Lazio. I, I just get but this feeling that he's just You've been given a minutes. chance now. I mean, at least, at least. I mean, even if you're playing for a, for a free transfer move um, to someone else, I mean, at least. I know. think he's already got something in line. When players go like that, they 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 already have something in, in line. Um, I get the vibe, feeling, watching him play that he doesn't care, and he's got something already lined up. Mm. There were a lot of flashpoints in this game, which I know Nima you love more than anybody. Paredes <laughs> against Pedro was, was quite amusing. I love the Dybala slap and also Dybala taunting Gwendouzi sorry, by, that, by holding up is... a shin pad depicting him himself holding the World Cup trophy. I mean, that's just as you Argentinian call it, Argentinian shit I mean, listen, South American football shit is the best. It, it, it's, it's just fantastic. Um, but Argentinian one is like the best in the world, and then you have Uruguay. Where they are like intergalactic champions of shithousery. Like there's no no one comes close to Uruguay for shithousery. But yeah, when he's holding like, and the, if you look at that entire move as well, first they start you know winding each other up, 
Then <laughs> Dybala goes away, pulls down his sock, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and just and then he says, "Oh, the referee's coming," and then he just like walks away because he doesn't want to get sent off. And then he takes out his shin pad whilst he's getting. I mean, it's just oh, it's so fun. It's so funny. Um, and then he's like taunting him with that because G- Genduzi is a hothead as well, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, and he and he's like showing off the shin pad with himself holding the World Cup, you know, trophy. And, and you know, obviously Genduzi was in the France squad, wasn't he, in the final? So no, it's it's just unbelievably funny, <laughs> unbelievably funny. It, it's uh, this was one. I mean, maybe if even if the football on the pitch was not no, this right. made up for it. This was this was... like oh, but the, no, the game itself. There was so this was such a Rome derby. Mm. This the, the madness of it, the the chaos, the the feistiness, the the, the shit housery, all of it. And Paredes, of course, Argentinian, winding people up, left, right, and center. Um, no, it was, it was hilarious. Was missing was Jose Mourinho on the touchline. That, that's the only thing that it didn't have was Mourinho yeah. doing something as well, or you know, so, yeah, it was it was absolutely brilliant. Um, no, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, really, it was really it was it. it was an event for sure. Um, the only thing that was le- where mm. where we were let down. We will talk about this more afterwards. But Lazio, we have to condemn Lazio fans. I mean, the, the, the Lazio has a terrible image. Um, sometimes it's overplayed. Um, because they're not the only ones. No, of there's course not. lots of clubs, but this was just this was disgusting. Um, last last Actual week, actual Nazi memorabilia. Like, I mean, Stefan. I don't know if Radu knows what he was wearing, but he was wearing a hoodie where on the left sleeve was the Lazio. You know, they're called SS Lazio, aren't they? But the SS was in the font of the German Nazi SS mm. on his sleeve, and it's like literal Nazi memorabilia. Um. And then this on the back of a week where Lazio fans were, you know, racially abusing Weston McKenney. It's just like, yeah, you know, it's just it's exhausting. It's no, exhausting. Yes, Lazio, Lazio have a real problem, a real image problem. Uh, mm. And but well, they have an image problem, but all of Italian football has a racism and and, yeah. and, and, and a problem, and they need to deal with it, and it's not being dealt with properly and seriously. And well, have the Lazio even come out and condemned either of these incidents? I've not seen. I've anything. not seen anything. Mm. You know that, that's where that's where mm. I was coming to with the image problem. Like you know, this mm. stuff goes on. It's awful. We condemn it loads. We just condemned it. You know, Lazio are not the only ones to do it. But I mean, Lazio they don't haven't even come out and and. Well, I've not seen anything. You know, but and that's because I, they are hold, held hostage by the people. That, that that's the thing. Them. You know, Lotito is in a. He he he's always had a very bad relationship with the ultras, and he knows that he can't he has to be very careful and be very political about this and diplomatic, even though he might not want to, but he doesn't really have a choice because of the power that the ultras have at Lazio and the relationship, the deteriorating relationship uh, or the, the non-existent relationship between Lotito and the fans. It's just always yeah. been awful. So he, he can't do too much. His hands are tied. And, and this is again, a broader issue that we speak about in Italian football where ultras, you know, there, there, there's parts of their culture which is absolutely fantastic and unique, but this this part of it is dreadful. It's disgusting, and and the fact that they can hold wield so much power and hold clubs hostage like this is is not good. Absolutely. Uh, let's move on to Milan now. And Milan continue their amazing form right, right now. Dominate Lecce three nil. They're they're playing fantastically for seven wins in a row. Mm-hmm. I mean, playing fantastic football. Scoring lots of goals, they look in really great physical shape. Their, their key players are, are are in form, and Rafael Leal and Pulisic, who we've we've been praising a lot on the mm. show uh, recently. Teo Hernandez as well in this game, he had an incredible shot that that, that hit the bar. Um, we we'll start off with Pulisic and Liao, and then I want to come on to Pioli um, and ask the same question that we asked about De Rossi. But first of all, Pulisic, who was playing in a new position in this game because Loftus Cheek was was yeah. uh, was not playing, and um, there's the central central attacking midfield role, and he's got a great goal with his left foot. He went close yeah, with goal. another, and he's now got um, 13 goals and seven assists this season. And in 2024, he's got six goals and five assists. So he's having an incredible calendar year and as for Rafael Liao great finish he is also in incredible form in 2024 seven mm. goals and seven assists in 2024 so I mean Pulisic and Liao Nima, they are 
they are. I mean, they, you, you probably can't find a duo, an offensive duo, that are, have been in as good form in 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 Italy this 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 uh, well in 2024. Can, can, can yeah, we, I don't Calendier. think you can. No, I think the both the two of them have been outstanding, and and uh, the way they really complement each other really well, don't they? The way that they play, it works. They really click together, um, and it's starting to come together for Milan uh, with those two. Um, uh, and when they are in this form, I mean, Pulisic for me is, you know, if you remember last summer, I, I said, look, I think he's going to be the first American to become a superstar at a historic club. Um, and he's not there yet, but I think he will be. I think he, he's perfect for this Milan. He really is. His, he, his, his runs, his, his natural traits just suit this Milan so, so well. And when he's in those positions, he rarely makes a mistake. Um, he buries it. And, and it's really impressive to see what Pulisic has done. Um, and and continues to do, and I think he's going to be very useful for for Milan. And and it's, and and if if an Italian team is to win a European trophy, I I really think that Milan is 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 the best shot that it, the Serie A have, because the way that they play, I think, will pay off more in Europe. It's um, just a shame they're meeting meet Roma. Really, really, really is a shame. I would have lo- wished those two teams would have uh, avoided finals, avoid each other. I'm I'm just gutted when that came in. But the big question here is like De Rossi. Is I mean, it, unlike De Rossi, there doesn't seem to be that much uncertainty uh, about this now. With De Rossi, it's one that you know he could stay, he might not stay. With Pioli, it, it now looks like he is he is going to stay. So the question here is, is it right for Pioli to say because we were both of us, and I think most ninety nine percent of people were saying probably before the season started, and then certainly kind of going into the new year that. It's the right decision that at the end of the season, Pioli should leave, Milan should move on. But, I mean, he is really, I mean, the form that Milan are in, the way that they're playing, I mean, would you now turn your, change your mind and say that actually it's the right decision for Pioli to stay? Or should we, should we still think, oh, it's just, it's just a good run of form. Milan would be making a mistake if they just go by this form and, and keep him. I, um, I don't. It's a tricky one. It really is because, on the one hand, at the end of this season, he will have been there for four and a half, or for for more than a half, four point eight years uh, at at Milan, and overall, he's done a fantastic job. But I do wonder if maybe it's time to go to someone else to to take the next step. Is purely the right person to take that next step? That's the question that they need to answer. I'm a little bit on the fence because I think he's done, I think he's maximized the potential of this Milan squad. Milan have a good, they're going to finish second. Hopefully they'll reach far, maybe even win the Europa League. Then it'll be a very good season. But I still think I can't just shake off the feeling that maybe it's time to move away from Pioli. If it's not this season, well, then it's next season because then after five and a half years or four and a half years, there is you need to sometimes just open the window and air out, don't you? Yeah, it's and a difficult one for me because Pioli has been at times a patchy manager. Like mm. he's gone on these incredible runs before. Like if you look at the Scudetto season, people forget that, you know, mm. Milan were, they were good that season, but they really, it was just that amazing run that they had in, in uh, 2022. Yeah, um, you know, towards the end, towards the end, they, they went on that amazing run, which is what against really their points, difficult opposition, propped their points yeah. tally up, and then and then you know, and then we've had these periods where where Pioli's been in an awful run, and people have been calling for his head, and then he's turned it around with a patchy run of wins. And I mean, this has been going on for too long in twenty three. I mean, we're now in April, and this has been it's been pretty much the whole calendar year. Milan have been in great, great form. So you would say it's not just a patch of form, but we we from what we've seen in Pioli, there's nothing to suggest that. They couldn't suddenly maybe not win for the last month of the season or start the next season with winning with with, with not winning any of their games in the first month. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. we've been there before too many times. So I'm kind of torn. I mean, if you're judging it just on 2024, you would say, well, you have to keep Pioli. And I think he's going to stay now. All the public statements that are coming out from the from the club are saying that he's going to stay. The the journalists are all saying that he's going to stay. So it looks like he's going to stay. But I'm like you, I'm kind of on the fence whether it would be the right decision. I, I guess at the end of the day, if you were to get rid of him, 
who do you replace him with? And that would be obviously the key. Uh, you have to get someone that you that you know is going to do a better job because at the end of the day, even purely being a patchy manager is still, well, he's still, like you said, he's still done amazing at Milan. He's won one Scudetto. He's going to finish second this season. Got to a semi-final. He's, he's you know, he could possibly win the Europa League. So, end of the day, bottom line is, and then he's developed players as well. Yes, he's, he has. He's developed players. He's got them profits on sales. Um, so he's, he's you know, the, everything. My, you know my thing on this. I think Sarri is the only natural one out there that I think would be a step in the right direction. Perhaps even Conte, but then you disrupt everything and then you have to rebuild once again like you did last summer. Um, but So I don't really believe in Conte. Thiago Motta would be the, the natural choice in that position in that situation but again first you know that's that'll be his first job in a big place there's a lot of uncertainty around this so I do kind of understand from a Milan perspective you know better the devil you know um you know what purely can do you know what purely is and you obviously these players believe in him and they're behind their coach so if it ain't broke why fix it but on the other hand it's been four and a half years it feels like Milan have reached the ceiling under Pioli. And can he win them the Scudetto? Yeah. That's the question. And I'm I'm not sure. I don't know where I stand on that. I'm very much on the fence. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with you. I, I'm with you. But, you know, push will come to shove this week. Yeah. So maybe we'll change our minds, you know. And, yeah. you know, if they, if they were to go out to Roma, then... You know, we would say, well, where, where's the substance at the end of the yeah. season, and then and then things might change again. So, yeah, um, yeah we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good win for for Milan. It's good preparation for the Europa League. Easy win. The game was over at half time. They played against ten men for the second half. They rested players in the second half. You know, they're going to be fresh um, for for um, for the for the Roma game. Um, so it's good. Uh, Chukwueze also has been pretty good in his last appearances, yeah. and we were. Not writing him off. I think a lot of people were kind of saying he's maybe he's not injured. Milan quality, but he's he's been yeah he's been pretty good. Uh, he's not mm. he's not warranted the price tag that the, no. the price that they played for him yet. But but he's been. But we have to say though, he's probably the only him and Musa have probably been the only ones who haven't been successes out mm. of the summer signings. The rest have been yeah. outstanding. Like the, the rest well, of yeah. I mean, Okafor really obviously has had a lot of injuries, so yeah. there, there's that's the debate. But when he has played, he's been he's been very good. Uh, yeah. You know, so Reinders has been outstanding. Hmm. I, I think he's been brilliant. Loftus Cheek, Pulisic, yeah. Loftus Cheek has been great. Uh, Pulisic has been great. even Gabia since he come back has been yeah. has been really good as well. Yeah. Hmm. So they've done they've done a really really good job. I mean, Terracciano we haven't seen enough yet, and Pioli's giving him the treatment after he's made a mistake. So, you know, it's the Italian coach treatment of young players making a mistake and then they have to fare gavetta, which you love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send them down to Serie C. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's what he's doing now So with, with, with Taracciano. So it's... Um, no, look, it's um, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, let's 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 uh, let's move on to the other Champions League chasers. So first of all, Bologna they finally slowed down. This wasn't a very good game at all. Nil um, nil at Frosinone. Very poor first half from from Bologna. One of the poorest halves I've seen from them this season. Dominated the second half though, and they should have still won the game. Uh, and Doi missed two open goals with the last two kicks of the game. Uh, I don't know how that that didn't go in, but there's uh, two the end... things that annoy me about this game and and the Milan game. On the one hand, Kristovic was sent off um, in the Milan game, but here Sellemakers does pretty much the same thing and is not. So, like th- this is what I mean about the consistency. You have to apply the laws of the game consistently. Selimic, if if Kristovic is a red card, Christ is a red card, and Sellemakers is a red card. Because it's you can't barge in with your foot in someone's face like that, or or, or that high up with your foot, or wh- whatever. It's your foot. You're responsible for it. So th- that's the only thing. But th- th- that kind of annoyed me with, with these two situations in this game. But in these two games. But no, I think Bologna. There's we were bound to have a reaction. They can't just keep. I mean, no. at some point they have to stop dropping points. They have to start. Like it just it just doesn't feel. I don't know. It just feels like this is a bit of a regression to the mean, and which is why I think. We actually have quite a bit of a. I think Roma can catch Bologna. Like it wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah, but it's probably going to be irrelevant because, because, like you said, you know, there's going to be five teams, and I, I just well, Atalanta after losing, they're they're they're, mm. they're eight, 
The, yeah. the eight points behind Bologna. It's a lot. It's a lot to make yeah, up. I don't see that happening. It's a lot to yeah. make up, isn't it? Yeah. Although they do have a game in hand, but it's, it's, if they beat Fiorentina, there'll be five. But yeah, it's not over. It's not no. over. But the Bologna are in such a good position. They've got such a good run in. Uh, they're so good at home. You, you, you know, this. Was but, just, again, and they still should have won this game. If you look at the yeah. actual chances, if you look at the xG, even not playing a good game. This is what I like about Motti. He's a very effective manager. Um, you know, he he. I think in the end, in the end, they 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 had about like a one point five. To be energy, honest with you, though, you know, to be honest with you, if you look at Atalanta's running and you look at Bologna's running, I mean, I'm looking at it now. Atalanta have got Verona, Monza, Empoli, Salernitana, Lecce, Torino, and Roma, right? And Bologna, they've got Monza, Roma, Udinese, Torino, Napoli, Juve, Genoa. Mm. Yeah, Bologna's I'm... is more difficult. It's more difficult. But then Bologna also have been incredible against the big teams this season. They've only lost one mm. of them against the big sides. So they, they seem mm. to perform really well. And, and then you look at Roma, they've got Udinese, Bologna, Napoli, Juve, Atalanta, Genoa, Empoli. Those are really tough games. Really tough. It's it's going to be a dogfight. Um, so you, do you, I don't want to count out. No, Atalanta. no, no. It's not over. It's definitely not over. But the, you know, you've got that that points advantage with, yeah. with only seven yeah. games left. I mean, that's yeah. that's significant. That's yeah, significant. It is. It is. I mean, Atalanta yeah. have a lot of games to play in the cups as well. Yeah. And same with yeah. Roma as well. You know, they're, they're in a, they're in a commanding position. Um, but Atalanta, you know, they 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 really this is this is a bad bad loss for them. They lose two one at, uh, at at Cagliari. Um, Atalanta have had a bad week. They had a bad, bad week, and they they were dominated. They were really bad against uh, against Fiorentina. Fiorentina. They completely outplayed in that game. They 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 should have lost two or three at least in that game. They they're, they're lucky that they're still in that tie um, in, in the Coppa Italia semi final. And then they come to Cagliari, and they they were in control the first half. They took the lead, but the second half they were really bad, and they kind of they lost their composure. They lost their heads. They got a lot of yellow cards. And yeah, maybe it's, a, you know, we thought that Ratalanta would, would kind of turn the page after that great win in Naples. And then they do this last week and maybe it's just a bit of, you know, game after game after game after game. I was game. just going to say, it's fatigue. It's tough game after tough game after tough game after tough game. And they're not, they don't have that much depth in the squad. It's, there's bound to be uh, some form of reaction. Um, so... Yeah, I'm... I think they do have a decent squad. Actually, I think they, they and I think well, I mean, that's pretty rotated. Death. But I think it's just natural on any team, any squad yeah. that you play that number of games. Maybe it was that. Um, it's bad preparation for Liverpool. I, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for them uh, mm. against Liverpool. Then they're, they're coming into this game. But really, what I wanted to talk about here is 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 Claudio Ranieri. I mean, what he is doing with Cagliari, it's it's a it's a miracle. It's a mir- it's a miraculous. Uh, escape if they if he manages to keep this calorie team up you know on paper this calorie team are for me they're in the bottom three teams in 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 Syria no doubt about it you, know, you, you will look not at, have any argument for me well you that. look at you look at the team you look at their attackers and you think where are the goals going to come from you mm. look at the defense and you think well how do they keep the goals out <laughs> uh, you know I mean it's 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 not it's 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 a no, team it's that it's, it's a team it's a Serie B team I mean they mm. they shouldn't even be in Serie I mean it was a mir- miracle that they got yeah. promoted last season wasn't it and they scored yeah. in the was it the 95th minute to go up mm. wasn't it in the in the yeah, against uh, it was badly wasn't it that they yeah. that they uh, you're the Serie B expert here mm. Nima um, mm. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong I mean uh, it's yeah. a miracle what what Ranieri has done and they, you know, now they're four points above the relegation zone. They're up to 13th. Um, they, but, you know, despite the lack of quality, they, they fight, they never give up. And listen to this, right? They, they scored with an 88th minute winner against, against Atalanta to, to win the game. The number of late goals from Cagliari this season is absolutely insane. It's insane. We talk about Fergie time. But this is Ranieri time. 88th minute winner against Atalanta to win the game. 96th minute equaliser to draw against Napoli a few a couple of weeks ago. 94th and 99th minute goals to turn a, 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 a nil one deficit to a 2-1 win against Sassuolo. 94th and 96th minute goals to turn a 2-3 deficit against Frosinone into a 4-3 win. 
120th minute winner to beat Udinese in the in the and competition. 94th minute goal away against Bari to get to the Serie A under yes. Ranieri, Pavoletti. Like, yeah. This is, yeah, this is Ranieri time. Dili ding, dili dong. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, it's never mind Fergie time, it's Ranieri time. And <laughs> I love he, that. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's truly remarkable. Um, what he's doing and I agree with you the fact that he scores so many late goals the fact that he scores that his team his Cagliari scores so many important late goals I mean that game against Frosinone was was mental the 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 3-0 the down to 4-3 that's one of the most insane games I've seen ever in the Serie A that's the game of the season there's no doubt about it yeah that is the game of the season that was batshit like it was just absolutely crazy and it's and 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 to see him at Cagliari of all places as well, to see him kind of, you know, be able to bring them back to the Serie A. And by all accounts, I mean, we, we can't say anything. I know the 13th on 30 points, but it's only four points down to the relegation with Frosinone sitting there. So anything can still happen. But it is looking like they could go down. Oh, sorry, they could stay up, sorry. And that would be a miracle because like you said, this squad is not good enough to, to uh, like, <laughs> they're not 13th good, to put it that way. No, it's it's, it's, it's miracle. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's a coach that has performed what the biggest miracle in the history of, of well, for me, mm. not only the Premier League. I mean, it's definitely the biggest miracle in Premier League history, winning the, the, the Premier League title with Leicester City. For me, it's the crazy. biggest miracle pound for pound in in English football history, maybe mm, in yeah. in the history of, of football, of club it football. It shouldn't be able to happen. Because like, it shouldn't just, be able to happen, happen that a team like Leicester City win the Premier League with all the money and that the advantages uh, that, that, you know, the top teams in, in the Premier League have, uh, you know, Manchester City and Arsenal and Chelsea and Manchester United and Liverpool. I mean, it should be impossible. Um, to do what he did with that Leicester City team that nearly got relegated the season before, only just to manage to stay up the season before, and then he, he wins the he wins the Premier League with them. I mean, I mean that's a miracle. I, mean, I don't know whether you can you can put Cagliari. I don't think anything will match that. Not even this Cagliari will match that. But this is a miracle uh, in itself. And he's seventy two years old. He's seventy three later this year. He's still doing it. Uh, I mean, his story. His his. They need to make a film on Claudio Ranieri. They have to. They need to make a movie on Claudio Ranieri because his story is just amazing. He's he's 72. He's been he's been a manager since 1986. <laughs> he's coached I don't know how many teams. He's I think 22 teams or tw- he's had 22 different managerial jobs. I mean it's it's unbelievable what what he's do what 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 he's done. And he's such a great guy as well. He's such a lovely person. He really is. Um, I mean, it's, it's incredible. He was managing Cagliari in Serie A 33 years ago. <laughs> you know, 33 years ago, he was managing Cagliari and he returns to them in Serie A. I mean, oh, it's just amazing. It's amazing. No, you've got to love him. And he's such a lovely human being too. And he's one of a, one of the good guys in football and, and a true gentleman. And, and I just, it's so, who's been so kind of, mistreated in a way as a perpetual loser always the bridesmaid never the bride kind of thing and mm. I just it's what he's doing with Cagliari now and his Cagliari like I said is that's what I was alluding to the fact that he was coaching them before I think it's beautiful and and and, and it's the fact that he keeps them on keeps them up which I think is very close to doing is fantastic and I wonder what they how do they where do they go from now i mean does do they continue with him like does he want to continue or does he this know, would be the perfect off? time for him to retire yeah, you would think yeah. like go out on a on a high you know yeah. keep right him off with, into the sunset yeah but then you know you don't know maybe this is this is what keeps him happy this is what he loves doing like roy yeah. hodgson God bless him. roy God hodgson bless him. kept going i mean he's roy hodgson 70s obviously he's had some some health issues recently and he had to he, i mean i thought it was horribly 
the, the way that that was that was dealt with by the club, disgusting, um, disgusting, and the fans oh, and everything. Dis- but but absolutely disgusting behaviour. With Crystal, Crystal Palace, Palace, he left them eventually. But you know, does he keep going and keep going until until he's literally not well enough to do it, or mm. or does he does he? I don't know. I mean, is is I guess is, is at the end of the day, I think it's probably it's, just, it's up to him at the end of the day. If he keeps calorie up, it can be his decision what what he yeah. what he does. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, for sure, for sure. A, mir- a miracle, and and um, yeah, eight points this season, one with goals from the the eighty eighth minute onwards in Serie. A. Eight points. I mean, that's that's almost thirty percent of their points have been <laughs> have been uh, have been uh, have been claimed in in basically an injury time. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a great story. Let's move on to Napoli. Um, before we sum up the the rest of the games, um, for ten to fifteen minutes in this game, Nima Napoli played like Scudetto winners for fifteen mm. minutes. Probably the only fifteen minutes this season. The second half, there was a crazy spell in the second goal, second half where there were five goals scored in this game in fourteen minutes. It was, it was. I was watching it and it was amazing. It was amazing was to watch. And Napoli scored three goals in five minutes. And they were all amazing goals. And Ossiman header where he leapt like Cristiano that, Ronaldo. That. I was just that. Did you see that leap? Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was surreal. Mm. Like his his leap is insane. And again, it's this like this springy boing. Like he just jumps. It's like from from. It looks like he doesn't take any like any like he just literally standing still and then boing just jumps yeah, he up hung like in the arrow. air and he hung in the air as well it's, it's just mental but all like, three all those three goals in that five minutes were insane goals politano with a volley was just unbelievable Zielinski's, politano yeah all of them Zielinski's left foot shot off the off the bar i mean incredible goals and they just got on it and it was like watching napoli from last season for for five mm. minutes <laughs> The only five, ten, fifteen minutes this season. Um, you know, so it was it was nice to see Napoli. They played poor in the first half, and then they were just completely a different team uh, in the in the second half. And it's a good win. I mean, it's good to see Raspadori score as well. I said last show, two goals, two assists in thirty games before the game. He didn't even deserve to go to the Euros on based on that, in my opinion. Mm. Nice to see him him score. Let's see and hope that he can have a good end to the season. And Napoli can have a good good end to the season. Um, they've pretty much got too much to do, I think, for the Champions League. They're, they're too, oh my God! Yeah, they're, no, too no, far, no. they're too far behind. They need no, no, they no. need a miracle. But yeah, no, it's not going to happen. They're not going to the Champions League, and I don't think a single Napoli fan believes in that either. Um, uh, the Europa League well, is not going to happen. Listen, if either. they win their next two games against, I think it's Frosinone and Empoli. Uh, yes, Frosinone and Empoli in the next next two games. They win those two games, then they play Roma at home. You know, you never know. They win that game; mm. it could, it could potentially yeah. reopen. It. They need a miracle. They need to win all their games and hope everyone yeah. slips up. But uh, I think it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Be, but it's, it's, it was good. But I do think that they are in in the driving seat to be in the Conference League, which is hilarious if Vincenzo Italiano goes there. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine? And, he'll have a th- and he has a third bite at winning that bloody cha- Conference League uh, with Napoli. Um, and then there'll be no excuses if he doesn't. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but regardless, it's uh, no. I, I think that's where they're headed. The Conference League, because I don't see Lazio or, or Torino overtaking them, or well, maybe probably for seventh will get a Conference League this season because yeah. the Coppa Italia, Juventus yeah. will be in the final probably, yeah. and then um, uh, Atalanta or, or Fiorentina. Fiorentina. So if Juventus win that final, then it will go yeah. down to the. Seventh, Seventh yeah. yeah. That's why I think Napoli will go to the Conference League. I, I think you were going to win that. So um, no, look, it's uh, you know it's it's you know seventh is it's been a horrible season for Napoli. Um, it's time to just end this nightmare and 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 rebuild and start over. Get rid of Ossiman, sort that situation out as soon as possible. Bring in a proper sporting director. Bring in a coach. Start building. Get yeah. back to work again. Yeah, for sure. Um, lovely goal from Colpani as well. He's got yeah. another fantastic goal. Great game of great goals. The rest of the weekend Serie A fixtures, uh, some dramatic endings in, in, mm, in games in Serie A this week. So Salernitana <laughs> 2, Sassuolo 2. Uh, Sassuolo will, will kick themselves for not winning that game. Empoli 3, Torino 2. Uh, another dramatic ending. And uh, Verona 1, Genoa 2. 
uh, Udinese play Inter on uh, on Monday and before uh, we're recording before that game. Um, so they're yeah, so the relegation race um, continues to be very very tight. I mean, Empoli beating Torino is mad. It's <laughs> how Davide Nicola if he manages to pull this one off, like it's crazy. Um, uh, Torino I, will be kicking themselves as well because if they'd have won that game, they'd have been right yeah. in the race for, a, for yeah. a conference league place. But Sassuolo dropping points to Salernitana, that's, I wonder if that won't come to bite them. I think it will. I think it will. But it's very tight. It's very tight. I mean, 15th to 19th, three points, and then Lecce uh, a point ahead, and then Cagliari another point ahead of them. So it's, it's, it's 13 to 19, it's all still up for grabs but Cagliari mm. have put themselves in a in a position where they've Very got a little bit position. of a, they've got a little bit of breathing space now um only a little bit it could soon be taken away from them um but mm. it's, it's a, they're in a they put themselves in a in a position that they can they can stay up okay uh european matches this week europe's back no champions league of course all our teams are out but europa league and conference league on thursday europa league milan roma liverpool atalanta uh, two huge, huge games. Um, as we said before, going to be very, very difficult for Atalanta uh, at Anfield. Scalvini's out of that game as well, and they're not going in on very good form. The good positive is, though, that Schemacher is scoring again, so let's hope that he can have a... This is the game where someone like Schemacher needs to turn up, you know. Well, he did turn up against... I thought he was good in, on the weekend. And he no, no, I mean, as in the, the occasion, the huge oh, game, absolutely. the huge yeah, yeah, no, he, he needs to, there's no doubt. This I mean, is where it's you... It's on him. Yeah, this is where you expect, you know, your big, your supposedly your big money signing to, 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 to turn up. And then Milan-Roma, I mean, is uh, two teams in great form. Uh, I still hold Milan in, in, as favourites here. I think it's 60 I think so too, but the fact that the second leg is in Rome... Um, with that Stadio Olimpico, yeah. that that definitely um, you know if Roma European can, night if Roma can go back to if Roma can go back to the Olimpico, we we're only one behind. Then they you know they they, they they've got a chance. Um, mm. You know they could take their extra sure. time. They've got the extra time. I mean, uh, it's that's going to be fascinating. It's going to be fascinating. I'm just gutted that, that we're playing it now. And in the Conference League, Victoria pilts in against Fiorentina. Fiorentina. Um, let's let's do Baggio, Premface, and Serie Ass of the week. Bad Joe. Well, I think, look, Claudio Ranieri, for sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, Politano's goal, Zielinski's goal, Osiman's leap, um, uh, all of those things. But also, I'm sorry, Max Allegri. <laughs> I, just, I just can't. Why don't we see a, a consistent Juve for 90 minutes, he's asked after yesterday. And he replies... Because 11 players are wearing purple shirts on the pitch and 11 are wearing black and white. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just, he's such a little one. He's such a wind-up merchant. And you know that he's going to piss He's going to piss off those who he wants to piss off with saying stuff like that. <laughs> Was looking slyly into well, the camera. Nothing beats the week before where, where where he said what changed between the the first half and the second half. Oh, the second half, I just uh, I just told the I told the players to just to to attack the goal a bit. <laughs> Football's a simple game. I I love him. I I just he I I can't. I, he's just I just the older he gets, the more he gets like this too. And I just I just love it. I just absolutely love it. And he's so funny. He's so it's so funny. And he, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's pissing off all the right people as well. Um and and uh oh, no, it's, it's just I died of laughter when I saw that. <laughs> okay, right. Prem face of the week. I don't actually... I've got one. Go I've on got then, one. Go. Um, this was sent in to us from one of our patrons. I'm just going to bring it up. It's it's from um, from uh, from four three three. I think they're called. Who who who, who sent it to us? Let's, let's... Uh, yeah, Matthew Provenzano, one of our patrons, uh, sent this to us, and it's four three three. This outlet in the Netherlands, I think they are. This is mental. They've got a picture of Cole Palmer looking like he's coming in from another dimension. <laughs> like literally, like he, it's it's like the mirror in The Huntsman where the Wicked Witch is like, like it's weird. It's like it's, It literally looks like a portal to another dimension with the caption, 
Name three players in the world better than Cole Palmer right now. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to but react to that. Cole Palmer. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just... And it is. And penalty and it's like, merchant, isn't he? Yeah, and he's holding himself. He's the, he's the English, and he's holding English Penalty. Himself. Yeah, and he's holding himself like he's cold. And they've got like a freezing uh, emojis as well. It's so bad. And I mean, I understand you do these things for social media interaction, blah, blah, blah. But sweet mother of Christ on a cracker. That is just, <laughs> um, Jesus. Yeah, no. It, that, that ass of the week uh, oh. is even worse. But we've already spoken about it. So... Stefan Radu wearing Nazi memorabilia in the crowd at the Lazio game. But then, <laughs> anybody want to take a guess at who retweeted it? <laughs> the Serie A English who account. It? Who posted the it? The Serie A English the... account posted it all over the world to make sure that everyone saw a former Lazio player wearing Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> um, it, 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 you know, and, and, and just you know, Stefan Radu in the house. Yes, that's it. <laughs> That's the caption, and then they deleted it, of course. Um, but I'm sorry, they, 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 the Serie A itself is just out. This anti-racism cap- campaign, the hashtag "Don't call me Gypsy," is is just. I, I, I st- I'm still waiting on someone to tell me I, I was hallucinating when I saw this on TV yesterday. I, I'm still waiting to someone to be like, "Nah, nah, nah, that that, that didn't happen." <laughs> I don't even know what to say. And, and and on the TV screen, it's hashtag don't call me gypsy. And then it says, don't call me gypsy in all caps, exclamation mark. And then it says, use the right words. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, you can insult him, but, don't, but oh you can God. insult do some blah, but it's just don't call him a gypsy. Use the Jesus right words. <laughs> Christ on a cracker. Like what, you know, as, as, um, so I, I don't even. I love I, to, I, you I'm, know what I would love? You know what would be a dream? would be just to be a fly on the wall of the Serie A marketing meeting when they were all discussing this and coming up with this 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 campaign, this marketing campaign, this anti-racism campaign, and just just how how the discussion went, you know, the brainstorming, oh, let's do this. Oh, let's do this. Oh, let's do a hashtag, don't call me gypsy. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, let's do that. Like, you know, I just... I would love to have been in that just just to, just to see how that'd be. It'd be like Alan Partridge, like that's what it, it really is. is. And it's like I'm just thinking, like the the guys, guys, we need we need an anti racism campaign for for to you know to against the Romani people, the Roma people. What do we do? do anyone got any ideas? It reminds like, me of the Alan Partridge scene where uh, Alan Partridge is is having a discussion about a marketing campaign about Ireland. And he basically says, we want the campaign to be about how Ireland is not just, and then he reels off a, a yeah, band, about, about, so 50, about 50 Irish stereotypes. So Ireland is not just about Guinness and leprechauns and potatoes. Yeah, and, so it and, literally is like that. You know, and, and then like, that was the campaign. And the, and the campaign should basically be, we are not just potatoes and Ireland. We're more <laughs> than this. <laughs> you know? Excuse just, me for the, for the Irish accent. Yeah, and, you nice. know, and, and it's like, this is basically, you know, let's just put the... I, I mean, in my head, there's a guy called Progressive Paolo who comes up with all of these things and he's like 50 he's 65 towards the end of his career and he's the one who comes up with all of this it's just it's insane it's it's just absolutely insane it's like what what, what galaxy do they live in like no. or what age well, do we know they what live i'm in? scared about nima i mean what 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 hashtag are they going to come up with when they want to do an, uh, an anti-racism campaign uh, against you know let's say after what happened with 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 Juan Jesus. <laughs> You know, they want to do the campaign for one Jesus when the next Napoli game comes don't along. Don't call me. I mean, don't call me. I mean, I'm scared. I'm scared. What's I'm, going I'm, on? Listen, on the calendar, next up on the calendar is Pride Month. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my so, God. You know, what? at this point, I'm just saying stay away. Just be quiet. Just stay away. Guys, please just, just take the day off. Whenever there's something happening in the world, just take the day off. Like, it's just, oh, God. They they are they are clueless. They really really are. You clueless. couldn't make it up. You no, you really can't. It's reached a point now where you can't make it up. No, you just can't make it up. You just it's 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 a parody. How like it's it's gotten to the point where you can't even make a parody of it anymore. No, you can't. You, how do you make that funnier? You can't. 
you you can't you literally can't no you could get you could go out and get the best right screenwriters yeah they just come up with what they do for like what they do (laughs) like for real only they're not ironic or sarcastic about it it's it's bizarre bizarre it is well as i as i've long said titanic life jackets couldn't (laughs) sell (laughs) absolutely beyond beyond comedy it really is right um so we're not finished yet guys no Uh, we're an hour and nearly an hour and 30 minutes into the show um what we're going to do now is uh, usually every tuesday we do a q a pod where we uh, receive questions from our from our listeners or from our patrons uh, and they they send in some fantastic questions and we do a show and we we answer the questions it's for patrons only um, what we're going to do is this week we're going to make this part of the of the free Monday show. Uh, we've got a few, we've got less questions um, this week. Uh, we've only so we thought we'd do it just to give you guys a taste. Yeah, give of, you guys of a those... taste of how, of what it's like. There's only six questions this week. Usually we we have twenty, 20 30, thirty thirty yeah. shows, thirty yeah. questions on on the show <laughs> sometimes. But because there's a few, there's less this week. We we thought we'd we'd put this on the end of the of the Monday podcast so you guys can see what it's all about. Uh, and maybe you know if you like it, um, become a patron, and, and uh, you can listen to this uh, every every Tuesday. Uh, and send in questions, and you as can well. send in your um, questions as well that, that that we will answer. So uh, Nima, Nima is usually introduces it. He asks the questions, and then we both answer it. So Nima, Nima, take it away. So yeah, this is the this is the questions from the Italian football podcast uh, from our from our the Italian football podcast patrons pod uh, episode, and and usually it's you know people send in their questions via email, DM on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but we prefer that they do on the on do so on Patreon, uh, Patreon dot com slash tifp. Um, the first question uh, that's come in is from Yuna Skovby, who says, "Hi guys, uh, who's the best and worst player to have played for each of the seven sisters?" And please don't let Carlo turn this into a prisoner of the moment and choose McKenney. Um Well, first of all, we have to define the seven sisters because that's... Inter- I mean, there's always a debate about that, isn't there? The traditional seven sisters. Yeah. I don't know. Because, I mean, Parma are, are, are in the Serie B now, so I don't really think we can count them. I mean, should we just go with Inter, Milan, Juve, uh, Roma, Lazio, Napoli, Fiorentina? Yes. Okay, let's should do that. Let's do that, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so the worst player, I think. Look, I'm not. I'm going to. I'm just going to start go with, with Inter. The worst. Start with yeah. Inter. The worst players that the worst player that I've ever seen play for Inter and actually seen. Um, I can't. There's so many, but I can't choose between Zdravko Kuzmanovic, uh, Gabi Mudingai, Janem <laughs> 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 <Yanem> Villar. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just, yeah. Take your or you yeah, take your pick. I, I mean, just go go on into squad like 13, 14, 15, 16 and have take a pick. Like have at it. Fair enough. Okay, I'll leave it. To, I'll leave. Oh, you want me to do it as well? <laughs> you want me to do it as well? I mean, oh god, banter here inside. There's, there's got to be. There's got to be someone. I mean, if we're talking about performance. Oh gosh! It depends if you do Pam. I mean, Gresco obviously infamous oh, for, the, yeah. for the, the, the Radu for the Gresco. Port. Yeah, Gresco for costing them the title. Uh, Cyril Domaru, uh, he Oof. was he was he Oof. was awful. Oof. Uh, Felice Centofanti was a player who they had in the nineties. Then you've got expensive flops as well. You've got expensive disasters like Gabby Gall and Quaresma. But I mean, if you're looking at actual you know ability, then you you know you probably wouldn't go for mm. them. But, yeah, I think mm. you've got enough there to pick one. Yeah, Best do. ever. I mean, how do you choose one? Um, the best player that I've ever play, seen play for Inter has got to be Ronaldo. R9. Peak R9 was just out of this world. Yeah, probably, yeah. If you're talking about actual, you know, again, not their performance for Inter, but their, you know... No, no, for his performance for Inter. The best player the, to the ever ma- pull on a shirt. 97-98 season, Ronaldo was insane. Yeah. He, he was unplayable. Best player to ever pull on a shirt. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, Ronaldo. Uh, Milan. You, Milan. Milan, yeah. Best player to ever play for Milan. That's tough. It's very tough. I mean, they've had so many Ballon d'Or winners, but I mean, for longevity, I'd probably have to say Paolo Maldini. I was just going to say, you, you can't go past him, can you? Yeah. Um, but look, Van Basten was just... Pound for really pound cool. by position. I mean, I think most people will, will, will agree that Maldini is the best. Savicevic. Look, talent-wise, I think Savicevic is one of the greatest players to ever play the game. 
let alone just for Milan. I mean, Savicevic was. I mean, you got you listen. You could go further back. I mean, you got Jenny. Yeah. You got uh, Rivera. Yeah. You've you, Rivera. you know. Then you then you move forward into the nineties golden era. I mean, the Dutch Kaka, pre Dutchman, peak Kaka, Aldini, yeah. Berezi, uh, You know, there's, there's so many. Then into the nineties, George Weah and George Weah. You know, the the, the two thousands team with, with Kaká and 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 all those. So it's it's yeah. I think Maldini. I think Maldini. Mm. The worst, I can't get past Kevin Constant. I just think he was, <laughs> it, it was just, it was painful. <laughs> it was having him run around, run up and down that left. Uh, no, I, I, I just can't. It's it's etched in my brain, Kevin Constant. Oh, gosh. Uh, God, this is a bad ones. I mean. Oh. Yeah, their banter era was no prize either. Like, sweet Jesus. Bertolacci. Do you remember him? Oh, yes, I do. Ricardo Rodriguez running around, looking awkward. Um, no, they they did have some, yeah. <laughs> but Kevin Constant for me was rock bottom. I mean, Hachi Mastur. Yeah, but he I, he wasn't a, he wasn't a first team player. He was just someone who they hyped up as a kid, wasn't he? I mean, I, I think it's a bit unfair to to go after him. But Kevin Constant came in as a. Digal, Kaká's brother, who was he was he was he wasn't even a footballer, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You could, you could, depends where yeah. you want to go. Um yeah. brother as well, I think, was at Milan. They yeah. used to sign the brothers, didn't they, for a while, so they could spread the tax, spread brothers. the spread the wages over the two players. Yeah. Juventus, I mean, Italians, man, mm-hmm. like <laughs> just what the fuck? Yeah. Like, Juventus is greatest player, but I, I have to go Platini. I, I have mm. to. I have to go Platini. Bad job. Baggio for me, you can't go past Baggio when he was at his best. Yeah. Like, but I mean, if I'm doing all time, uh, I mean, Baggio yeah. was my favourite player, but I mean... Yeah, Platini, of course. Platini you know, was at a level at his yeah. best at three years where he was just... Zidane was unplayable at Juve as well. No, there's, there's quite a for few. For a couple of years. Yeah, but then again, we're doing it as uh, mm. who was the best, like, as yeah. in, you know, I, I have to say Platini, mm. I think. Uh, worst, I mean, uh, again, Bantarira, Juventus. <laughs> uh, I never forget Dario Knezovic. Uh, Monty <laughs> came up with a classic, classic quote about him. He's so bad, I can't even say his name because it's Nick, it's kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> oh, Monty. I'll never forget that quote. Uh, he was he was awful. Uh, Christian Paulson was, oh my God. I mean, he, he actually was decent. Uh, Nicholas yeah. Bentner, I'm sorry. Nicholas Bentner is just. Bentner and Nelka. I've never seen a player be be criticised by the club that signed him on his presentation. <laughs> Marotta was criticising him whilst he was unveiling him. Like, it was just insane. Uh, oh, no, it's I, just... mean, I mean, nothing sums up the, the you know, the, the historic three, last three, three years that have been a disaster for you, or well, four years, if you want to say, with Pirlo, than, than Weston McKenney. Uh, I mean, you know, even though he's had a good season this season, I mean, he just, he sums up. He, he, Padouin was no prize either, brother, like yeah. seriously. Yeah, but he did he was, all right though for Juve. He was, he was mm-hmm. a decent, he was a decent squad player. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's probably Dario Knezovic, probably for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Um, R- um, Lazio, um, best ever player. Ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, you've got Kinalia in the 70s. Mm. Then you've got Nesta. Piola. you got from the two, probably you have to go from the two, yeah, if you want to go really far, far back to yeah. the 1930s, yeah. But then Crespo, you had Vieri, you had mm. Veron, you had, you know, Mancini. I mean, you had they had so many, I mean. Yeah. Nedved, for goodness sakes, when he was good. Yeah, yeah, you got um, some. you got some greats there. You got, I have to go Nesta, though. Yeah, I Nesta, think I have to go Nesta. Yeah. yeah. Worst player, oh, uh, Patrick and Johnny show, which I mean, <laughs> I, I just, I can't take your, pick your poison. Mm. Well, what, I, what about the, that, that guy um, that was, uh, what's his name? The Cameroonian guy that was, that claimed he was, he was 17 <laughs> and he was actually 42. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know which one you jo- mean. Joseph Minala. I think I've got yeah, to go with him. Oh so good. That's brilliant. Um, Roma. Best of Totti. Totti, yeah, yeah. He can't I mean, it's, go it's easy, it's easy. But, you know, there, there was, in the 80s, you had the greats. You had uh, Bruno Conti and, and Falcao. And Giannini and yeah. all these. But I, I think, yeah, Totti is, is, yeah, there's, no no doubt. Is. there's no doubt there. There's no, no debate there's no on that. Is. Totti is. Totti. Yeah. Worst. The, wor- the worst. Oof. Oof. 
what about Olsen in goal? Robin Olsen. Yeah, Robin Olsen was a disaster. Robin Olsen. No, but I think it's, you know, he was a disaster. Probably the worst goalkeeper, or one of the worst goalkeepers. Who just issued a press silence because of me. Because yes. Of me. What because is it that? with you and Swedish? Like, it's something about you and Swedish footballers. Yeah. Like, you fucking trigger them. I'm sorry. But between Kulusevski, Olsen, like, it's just, it's something with you and Swedish footballers. One day I had, I had the entire... Swedish media calling yeah, me no, non-stop I all day it. about it. I remember <laughs> it. So, like, all I did was tweet that, that he's shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's all I tweeted. I remember they turned it into a thing, and and then and then the the agent because it's they they have the same agent, don't they? Victor Nilsson Lindelöf and all these guys, and they didn't speak to the media. No, they issued a press silence for a week just because I tweeted that Robin Olsen was shit. Like thirty because minutes you, into you his tweeted, debut. yeah, you, you tweeted it. And the Swedish media picked it up and ran a story with it. And so as a result, what happened was their agent in solidarity got all his clients and the Swedish national team to not speak to the Swedish media. It's just, I, I still can't believe that actually happened. I know, it's mad. You and Swedish players, what's going on? And then, of course, Kulusevski, you triggered him so bad, he, he did it. He turned your tweet into content, yeah. a two-minute video, which I will never stop finding I funny. Know, I know. Um, and I was yeah. right on both of them, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, did yeah. we find someone? Who did we find? Uh, Roma, I, I can't think of any right now, but um, it's got to be one of those... I'll go with Robin Olsen just because I mean yeah. he's not the worst Roma player ever, but no, he was not, he not. was horrific for them. Yeah, he was. Um yeah, he was. Uh I can't think I'm blanking right now. Mm. Fiorentina best ever. Uh Kura Hamrin, Gabriel Battistuta, one of those. Or Antonioni. Or Antonioni. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, one of those. And the worst ever. Um I uh what's um not not um Mil- milenkovic but uh, one of these one of the defenders they've had recently in 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 it's just who can't defend like <laughs> <I've> been, quite, <laughs> been quite a few of those recently. yes exactly <laughs> like the last five years I've, i watched them and and some of these players is like they, they're not good enough to play for in the Serie A, let alone fiorentina um i'm struggling for names here but yeah go, go not Milenkovic, because I think that would be unfair. I would say in recent years, Kokorin. He's become like yes. a... He's yes, Kokorin, Kokorin. Yeah, Kokorin, yeah, Kokorin has become like a... Like, meme. Yes. Meme. Yeah. Absolute meme. Definitely in, in the recent years, Kokorin. Yeah. 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 Is that, is that um, everyone? Have we done all no, seven? Oh, we've got the Na- Napoli. Or oh, Napoli's easy. Like Maradona's easy. Maradona, <laughs> greatest of all time. Worst ever. I, I, I know he's not the worst ever. But Santa Croce. No, I'm not having that. I'm sorry, I'm not having that. Santa Croce was fantastic at Napoli. No, he, he was first, not. When he when he, he, he when he first burst onto the scene, he was fantastic at Napoli. He got in the Italy mm, squad. He was got, mm, he got yeah. picked up for the Italy squad. Mm, he was brilliant sorry, at first. Just gonna, just, mm, Nima, I, like listen, no, I was the I was his biggest sponsor. <laughs> I know yeah, Santa yeah. Croce's career. He was absolutely brilliant when he first came. Then he when he went off the rails because he, he went out clubbing every single night. And yeah. lost the plot, and then and then yeah. rid of him. He was brilliant at start. He got he got called up by Lippy, and Lippy was praising him, saying he's he's got he's got a big future in the in the game. And then he, the drop off was yeah because yeah. he was yeah. I wonder where Santa Croce is. <laughs> no, I've not heard of him for fifteen years. Yeah, no, I'm not having Santa Croce. But what, what was uh, what, what, what's his name? Dosena was also really poor. Uh, one of one of these uh, these Mazzari characters. Uh, Gargano. I mean, he was good for Napoli, but the, some of these guys were just. Gargano was great. Um, no, what, yeah. one of the maybe one of the four, the f- one of the four players that they sent to Lille for the Ossiman deal. Maybe one of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're not Napoli players. But that was just uh, that was. They just picked them up off the street and sent. Them <laughs> literally just signed them. Yeah, do you want to go? Do you want to go for holiday in France? We'll get paid for it. Um, yeah. So now, but it was there were a couple. There were a couple of stinkers. Uh, I know that they were good for Napoli, but when they left, they were just, you know, wow. Um, uh, yeah, they uh, during the Mazzari era, they were they was <laughs> there was quite a few players who were not good in that side who who Mazzari got the best out of. I love the guy in centre back who used to just elbow everyone. Do you remember him? <laughs> What's Aronica. <laughs> yes, that's the one I was looking him? for. Aronica, Aronica, yeah, Aronica character. Yeah, he, he was dreadful. Um, uh, yeah, 
No, so I mean that, that's Napoli. I would say Jens Kajust based on what you what I've seen oh, this season. Absolutely, Swedish, you're absolutely trying to go. You're oh, going oh, for a hat trick. Oh, no, they're going to they're going to hear this now. That's you're going it. for a hat trick. Another press, si- another press silence coming on now. For, for going for a hat trick of of winding up Swedish players. Um, yeah, no, no. Yeah, let's no, move yeah, on no, anyway because we've, we've spent ages. Yeah, on that. Gisperto Guzzo says Serie A is investigating Gianluca Mancini for his post derby celebration and, and could hand down a punishment. This coming from a league that provoked visits from the likes of Kanye West, Kevin Spacey, and yesterday who stopped at the Nazi team store before taking his teeth. I agree that Mancini needs to grow up, but WTF is wrong with this league. What happened to common sense? And most importantly, do you ever see a time when someone younger with a more modern forward-thinking mentality is placed in charge of the league? The growth opportunities are there and so easy to achieve. Why do they insist on turning down money? Sorry for the rant. That admittedly got away from me. Hope you're both well sending you my best from Vancouver Island. Ciao. Um, Listen, I understand. Look, Kanye West was invited by by Inter after he, you know, had nothing to do with the Serie A. Kevin Spacey was invited by Torino. So, you know, it's not Urbano the Serie A. Cairo, yeah. Yeah, Urbano Cairo. The, the Radu thing, yeah. But listen, here's the thing. This, no league, and this is just a Premier League, if you can't have a player in a derby waving a flag of their opposition as rats without any repercussions. I mean, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's just, you just can't have that. Because mm. uh, that, that like, I'm not defending what the, like, but it's, go, of course it's going to happen. It's the same thing with our chair be doing the finger to the Roma fans. Like, if you do stuff like that, you're going to get punished for it. The issue for me is always going to be the consistency, the way that they handle other situations, that they, they come down with a hammer on one situation and then they just can't seem to, and then they have anti-racism campaigns painting out everyone as apes or, or, <laughs> Or the hashtag, which is now, you know, immortalized um, and gone down the world yesterday. That's the problem. Yeah, um, definitely the consistency the, uh, as well. Yeah. I mean, even like, you know, if you compare the Acherby, the way that that was blown up to, the, to the way that McKenney has been dealt with. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, I mean, there's no comparison. They, they shouldn't. No. I mean, I know obviously one's a player and one's, yeah, that's one's the thing. bad. So I understand that. But still... It you know they, there's really been hardly anything about the McKenny no. stuff at all, and, yeah. and and that should I mean that's that's you know especially and it's gross. especially the way that the, the Serie A is is licking the asses of America uh, so yeah. much that you'd think that this would be something they really would be would would would, would actually want to to go big on an American per person of color being racially abused yeah. on primetime TV. I mean it's just well done, guys. Um, as for if there any anyone. Um, Anyone? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm no. sorry, but no, it's not going to happen until until. And I don't think they... it even matters anyway, because I, no. I, I think that even if they did, I think it's just this is just um, uh, Italy are behind in the evolutionary process on 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 marketing and and mm. and culture. They just don't get it at all. No, right? they don't get it. And, That's and the thing. I don't think I don't there's think any. It, matters I don't think it, it makes much difference whether they're old yeah. or young either. Uh, or whether, no, or whether they're raccomandato or not a raccomandato. Well, well I, th- I think it makes a difference. I think if, it might make if a slight act- difference, but they still don't no, get I it. I mean, it. the people running these marketing campaigns are, are, are young. I know that. They're not, yeah, but they're, they're not, not competent. People. They just don't yeah, get Yeah, but they're it. not competent. They're not competent. And, 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 and that's the problem. And I think it is what it is. But no, I, I, I do think this goal is going to be, you know, but it takes time. And you have to- Me and Nima disagree on this. I think it's a, it's a problem in the country. I think Italians just don't. I think it's that Italians too. Italians don't get marketing, whether it's in football or whether it's anywhere else. And I think, in, when when their other things work, it's because they sell themselves. Um, mm. You know, so uh, you know things like the food and 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 uh, the Actually, music, historic, the, yeah, the historic well, they landmarks. They sell themselves. Yeah. It, it's no, not- I, I I think I think the the I think the issue is is competence. Italian football is unfortunately littered with incompetent people in important places. That that's the thing. Uh, that's where I stand. I, I think it's a competence issue. There's always going to be a cultural difference because Italy, as we spoke spoken at length about, is is a country that is not you know it's it's different. It's not used to immigrants coming to it, but actually is a country where people are leaving, so they're not used to it, and so they talk about it like perhaps you do in the UK and the US back in the 80s or 70s, you know, and, and, and you know without you know making any moral judgment, defending them, just stating a fact. So. I think it's um, you know those those aspects, and it's going to take time. But this stuff, this is down to downright incompetence. It's 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 just the wrong people being hired to do it, and and no one in the room, as Adriano Del Monte tweeted out saying, the worst about the don't hashtag don't call me gypsy thing, 
he's like, the, the worst part about this, he said something, I'm paraphrasing, he said something about this to the effect of, the worst part about this is that you know that this has gone through different levels. This has been discussed before it's been launched. And then no one saw that this was bad. And that is a competence issue as well. I, I think you can't get away from that. You just can't. Right. Next question. Nicholas Thompson says, Hey guys, question for the pod. Did I hear Carlos say he wasn't a fan of FIFA and he would prefer to play pro Evo? What's all that about? (laughs) What's that all about is that with all due respect, (laughs) I I think that FIFA is the most overrated uh, video game in the history of video games. I think it's absolutely crap. Um, Well, I grew up in the, I remember when it first came out in about 94 and it was quite revolutionary right that right then and the first very first FIFA was like wow because you just we just weren't used to the the kind of 3D games it was all kind of 2D uh, or like Sensible Soccer which was a great video game by the way where it was oh, kind of like the sort of soccer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and it was uh, kind of like bird's eye kind of sort of I don't know how you describe that actually um, but it was anyway 3D and it was it was completely revolutionary but then Pro Evolution came up although it was called Winning Eleven in Japan and or ISS for a time and then it became then it was called Pro Evolution it was just the difference between Pro Evolution and FIFA it was just light years it was so much better like with FIFA you could only score basically in six positions in the goal bottom bottom left bottom right top left top right or the, maybe the middle left middle right uh, or the center of the goal down or or up or middle whereas whereas pro evolution was just just the way that it was so like it could you could, you could put it anywhere uh, any area any position of the goal and it was just so much better the whole gameplay the moves the skills it was just there was just no comparison was so much better. All that FIFA had was it had the naming rights and it had the mm. the official rights. It could call all its teams by its official names and <laughs> and it would have all the the stats and and all the um, yeah. the information would be right. But the actual play in the game, I mean, there was there was just no comparison. Um, mm. It was just 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 so much better. Um, and that was the case up until probably around about two thousand and probably eight two thousand nine, and then Pro Evolution. Uh, I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know why, but it, it fell off a cliff pretty much overnight. And the, I think maybe it had different game developers or maybe their budget or the people changed that were working there. And then it, it went shit for Evolution after that. I haven't played it <clears throat> since then. Uh, and FIFA, I've played FIFA a few times since then, um, but I, 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 it's continued to be shit in my opinion. Um, I don't like it at all. I think it's crap. Um, I think people, a lot of people that play it, are just conditioned to play it. They grow up with everybody. They grow up with everybody telling them our FIFA about video games. Yeah. From you. <laughs> they grow up with everybody telling them our FIFA is the best football game. You have got to play it, and then it's everybody plays it. And they don't know any different. Did Martin Samuel say it. Why is he talking like him? Like what? you, <laughs> what's you, that? Is that Martin you, you, you said it like Martin Samuel would say. Our FIFA is the greatest game ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's true. But I don't listen. But anybody is he li- like is Martin Samuel like the person that comes in your head when you think of a prem face? Because it is mine. Yeah. Like when I think of a prem face, I literally see him. I hear his voice. I it's his accent, like the fake Cockney, like the over exaggerated Cockney mm. dialect. Like it's it's him. He is the ultimate prem face parody, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He Sorry, is. got sidetracked. Yeah, he is. Um, he is. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> anyway, he's undefeated. He's undefeated. He's undefeated. Yeah, but um, yeah, no. Fit, listen, anybody that was born in like the eighties or nineties, Pro Evolution was was the game. Yeah. It was ISS, it was, as it was called, ISS, ISS or Winning Eleven. If you were if you were yeah. in a different part of the world, I mean, they yeah. were, they were they were just. Yeah. Just brilliant, brilliant games. They they were masterpieces, absolute masterpieces. They were. Um, Arash just says twenty five percent. Juventus recorded against Fiorentina their lowest possession rate in Serie A this season. Twenty five percent. Like that's all he sent. And if you don't know, Arash is is. I, I if I didn't know him, he's my friend. If I didn't know, I'd say this is essentially Carlos Berna, <laughs> like because the the Allegri whinging. It's just, it's just unbelievable. I love Arash. Um, I love Arash. Yeah, he's funny. Well, he's you, I take your twenty five percent Arash, and I and I <laughs> <laughs> and I give you sixteen percent possession for the second half and zero crosses. 
Mm. <laughs> and 41 <laughs> passes, less than less than one pass per minute for the second half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Next question is Terry Tsoi. He says, hi, guys, uh, not Italian football related, but could you please tell talk a little bit about the current turmoil in the Turkish Super League and what went wrong? Now, the reason why well, this is the, this could happen in Italy, this is absolutely batshit. This is the kind of stuff that only happens in that part of Europe and the southern part, like any any place south, more south than France or or so, so than Germany. This this is the football culture. So what happened? It was a Turkish Super Cup, yeah, and Fenerbahce walked off the pitch after three minutes of the rescheduled Super Cup Turkish Super Cup game against Galatasaray as a protest against alleged unfair treatment. Now, first of all, they had already fielded an under-19 team. And Mauro Icardi goes on and scores after three minutes and celebrates against an under-19 team. And then Fenerbahce's under-19 players just walk off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Fenerbahce president said, Ali Koç said, it's time, for the Turkish fo- it's time for Turkish football to be reset. They'd already said that they were going to walk off. Um, uh, he, he said it before the game. Um, you know, because so basically the proceeds from the game was going to go to the victims of the earthquake, which tragically killed more than 53,000 people. Um, and Fenerbahce and Galatasaray are locked in a title race. Um, and, you know, they're just two points behind um, Galatasaray with seven rounds to go. And Fenerbahce feel that they're being, you know, picked on. Um, and they'd asked for the Super Cup to be postponed ahead of the Europa League quarterfinal against Olympiacos on Thursday. Uh, and they also had demanded that a foreign referee take charge of this game, saying that they'd been unfairly treated by Turkish referees, uh, because last Wednesday, Turkish, uh, the Turkish Football Federation had sentenced two Fenerbahce players to a one-match suspens- suspension after violence broke out during a pitch invasion um, in Trabzon at the end of a league match. And, and, and they rejected, the, the, the Turkish FA rejected both of those requests. Now, the funny thing about this Super Cup is that it was supposed to be played in on December 29th. Yes, this was Riyadh. brilliant. Yeah, this was the <laughs> Ataturk. Uh, this is the, exactly. <laughs> it was supposed to be played on December 29th in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, but the Saudi organizers refused to allow the players to wear warm-up shirts bearing the image of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the founder of modern Turkey, to celebrate the centenary of the Turkish Republic. And they said that you know political slogans were banned. And so the game was postponed. It's just insane. <laughs> this is just insane, all of it. And of course, you've got Mauro Icardi there, which just makes everything even like. It, it's, it's I've got just, a funny it's... story about Mustafa Kemal uh, Ataturk. Okay. Uh, when I was, I used to live with two Turkish, two Turkish guys when I was when I was younger, and um, they uh, in, is that in Bedford? No, no, this was in London, and they they okay. uh, they convinced me that Mustafa Kemal and Ataturk were two different people. And for about six months, I thought that Mustafa Kemal and Ataturk were two different people. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, Just no, brought, that so brings back memories. But Turks, Turks are, I know I know the Turkish culture very well because I live with two yeah, people. It's... And they are, yeah, they are one of a kind. And, but Turks love to walk off the pitch. Like, there's, there's no... <laughs> dramatic. There's no... There's dramatic no, there's signs. No, there's no protests. country in which in which the teams walk off the pitch more than... than it's happened <laughs> multiple times this season. It happened earlier where one team... Uh, I can't remember which team it was. It might have been... Well, anyway, they walked off the pitch because they didn't get a penalty and they refused to play. I can't remember which team it was now. Uh, Istans, here it is. Istanbul Spor. Yeah. The president, Faik Sarialioglu, uh, walked down the pitch to call his players off in the match against uh, Trabzon Spor as protest for not getting a penalty. I just, I love it. I love it. I, I, I mean, I, I love this. Is like the madness of it. It's, it's just, it's hilarious. Turkish football is, is, is like, it's like, it's, it's as entertaining as Turkish soaps. Like, it's, there's always something dramatic going on, and everyone's really angry at one another, and and it's, it's really, really funny. Um, final question comes from Akbar, Akbar Palavan. It says, "Hi guys, hope you're both doing well. Just want to give a shout to the, shout out to." the Swedish international who won 73 caps for his country and Carlo favorite goalkeeper, Robin Olsen. He was playing the other day against city and he was caught ball watching and statuesque for three of the four goals he conceded. Um, questions for the pod. What kind of a player was Salvatore Schilacci? Why did he not have many caps for Italy? He only has 16 caps and scored seven goals, six of them in the 1990 world cup. Was he a one tournament wonder 
while also the ultimate bomber di provincia. And the second question, why do you, I, I think you haven't talked that much about Baldanzi at Roma. What do you make of his performances so far in the Giallo Rossi colours? From my point of view, he shows a glimpse of what he can do, but lacks the end product. And he looks so small on the pitch, he needs to grow some muscle. Maybe eat pasta with chicken fillet might be the option. <laughs> I love how Akbar just winds Carlo up. Um, listen, the Toto Scilacci thing, I mean, he wasn't supposed to start, was he? I mean, he was just a, like a fifth, fourth, fifth striker. I mean, mm. if you look at the strikers of that 1990 squad, Mancini, Carnevale, Vialli, he wasn't supposed to start. And then he's brought on and he scores immediately. And then after that, you play your informed players, don't you? Yeah, he got hot in a tournament, which which can happen in tournaments. Um, yeah. You know, a striker can get hot. And, and what happened in that tournament was that Italy started with Vialli and Carnevale. Hmm. Carnevale was a disaster. Uh, he was awful. In the first game against um, uh, Austria in the yeah. first game. Scalacci came on, he scored. Uh, Italy totally dominated that game. A chance oh, after chance just wouldn't go in. And Scalacci came on and he scored. Uh, and then, and then he he just got hot in that tournament. He got he got hot. He was putting his chances away, uh, and the, the country got behind him. And, and you know, he was played in Italy, and 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 you know, he he wasn't the you know he was a, a poacher. He was a he was a, a penalty yard penalty box striker, six yard box striker, rebounds, um, you know, reactions and. And, you know, his all-round play in terms of, you know, holding the ball up or making chances for himself, dribbling, beating players, he, he didn't really have any of that. Um, you know, which back in the day, back then, you know, we had more strikers like that. You know, that, that, that kind of striker, that penalty box striker has, has been eliminated from the game. The Gary Lineker, the Pippo Inzaghi, yeah. you know, the, the Toto Scilacci, they, they have been. He wasn't at the level of those other players. Um, you know, he still he, he still scored quite a few goals, but I mean, he was at Juventus for three seasons. His first mm. season was actually the 1989-90 season, in mm. which he did pretty well. He scored 21 goals in all competitions, pr- did pretty good start. Then he had that great World Cup. But then after that, he, he never really, yeah, he scored eight goals the next season in 42 games and seven goals in 40. Then Juventus sold him to Inter and s- similar kind of numbers, seven goals for Inter the first season, then five in his second season and then he went to Japan where he was prolific yeah. in Japan um but he was yeah. yeah he would never really was the level of the the top top you know he was a good player a good striker good penalty box striker but he just got hot in the my um, my memories of that world cup is watching it on Rai at my friend's place and Bruno Pizzul commentating uh Schilacci. iconic <laughs> like it's just it's Absolutely Bruno Pizzo. Like I met Bruno Pizzo in Euro 96 oh, yeah. and he was the most boring person ever. Like <laughs> he was so boring. I'm obviously iconic as a commentator, but he was Content, he yeah. was boring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no emotion, miserable, like yeah. No, it was it's just for me that he was World a giant was, as well. He was like, like yeah, seven did. foot. Like he was like, <laughs> he, he was, mass, like, he was massive, like the tallest <laughs> person I've ever seen. He was like a Oh my god, you're too much, man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was huge. Um, where were we though? Um, yeah, Robin Olsen. We, we were... Funny you said about Robin Olsen actually, just oh, as we were go. just talking about it. Yeah, um, Baldanzi. Listen, my fear with Baldanzi is: is there a position on the pitch for him in modern football? Again, coming back to modern mm. football positions, that's what I, I'm scared of with him. But look, if he can make Dybala work, and he has made Dybala work, and Dybala's also a dying breed. Mm. Then surely he can do it with Baldanzi. Who's well, younger. he's made Dybala work, but like Dybala again, like Dybala doesn't have a place in modern football at, at, at an elite team. Like no disrespect to Roma, Roma there's a Roma level, and then there's mm. Juventus, Milan, Inter, you know Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern level. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. Dybala can't make it at one of those clubs because you 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 just can't have a luxury player maybe is the wrong word but you just can't have a player with no that, that isn't part of the team in terms of the position on the pitch and Baldanzi does sort of like fit into that role in that like what is his position where do you play him like you can't play him as a winger he's not a wide man so you can't play him in a 4-3-3 he's not a centre forward you can't play him like in the centre of a 4-3-3 
I don't know whether you can you can't you know, if you were to play like a four two three one is in a, like a Trek or Tista position either on the the sides or in the center. I don't know whether you can play him in the in the center um, in the same way that you probably can't play Dybala there. So really, his one role probably is in a front two, maybe as a support striker. Maybe that is his role. But you know, he's a bit slow. He's a bit weak. You know, there's no doubt his quality is insane. What he can do with his left foot, like even the other day, last week, some of the crosses he was putting in um, were, were magical. Um, you know, he can put the ball wherever he wants it. It's got a great shot, <sighs> creativity, dribbling. But is there a position for him in modern football? That That is my concern in terms of how far he can make it. Can he make it right to the top? Because he's got the ability. There's no doubt that the talent is there. But that's my concern. That's my concern. I think you're all of... I, I agree with everything there. I just think it's... I just think he can still... I, I still think that there's something that can be done. There's a role there for him. Don't get me yeah, wrong. But is it... Exactly. Can, yeah. he, can he play at an elite team? Yeah. That's yeah, my yeah. concern. And yeah, then, you yeah. know... And... Yeah. But I said say I would say the same about Dybala now. I think that's been the case with Dybala for, for quite a few years now. Even mm. and that's why I think Juventus mm. probably were right to 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 get rid of him. Mm. Because you know, there isn't a place for him in, in even though you know, Allegri then went and played a three five two, which he could have played in. But anyway, <laughs> you know, in terms of if Juventus wanted wanted to try and at the time with the plans Juventus had, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh dear. I hope I'm. I uh, hope I'm wrong because do you do you walk around the house and like you, if you hit your foot, like you go and cuss at Allegri, <laughs> like you still have like you know bestemia. You just say porco porco max or yeah. something like that. Like is that how you do? Like do you know what I mean? <laughs> Allegri cane or some stuff like that. Like do you, do you go around saying stuff like that? Like it's literally just this. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I just love how he, he winds people up. He trolls his own fans. The funny thing about Allegri is that he, I, I can't remember a coach that, that trolls his own fan base as good as this man does. <laughs> like it's, just, it's just unbelievable. It's yeah. brilliant. Anyway, look, let's leave it at that. We're right. Exactly two hours. Exactly yeah. two hours. It's a new record for us, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, later this week, Nimmer's not going to be about. Um, because he, I'm going away to. Yeah, I'm doing some some personal stuff in in Stockholm. And, yeah, and, and, and I will be about what? though. I'm going to do doing doing a reaction to the the Europa League and Conference League games. Um, so I'll either get that out um straight after the game or, or the latest on Friday morning. Um, but I'm going to aim for eight straight after the game. Um, so and so what we're, yeah so so basically it's just and also of course we're going to launch the Football Italia thing, which is also taking a bit of time from from everything as well but then after that we'll be back to normal and we're actually looking at doing some really cool interviews as well to end the season yeah uh, on top of all the other stuff and of course prepare for the euros so yeah absolutely right let's leave it at that thank you everyone for listening we'll see you later in the week for the european reaction until then ciao ciao